How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the KCM. We're ready for week number three here. Getting it started with Jadong versus Snow. Apocalypse is your first map. Let's go. Bringing up your score screen here at the bottom, we've got Light Mind Speed, YSC Snow Mini, Hero Queen, Jadong. It's looking like a fantastic week. Everybody bringing out uh, some fresh names. Like, we haven't seen Speed for a really long time, and YSC did really, really good last week, but I'm glad to see Protoss putting together a better lineup, although they still did very well with the lineup they brought last week. Yeah, even though they threw a lot against the wall, quite a lot of it managed to stick, it seemed. And uh, Yeah, but now we've got Snow and Mini back in, though YSC making another repeat appearance. Happy to see him again. Yeah, nice to see Speed. He's a pretty talented player, just not quite in the higher echelons as these other guys, but certainly capable. Mind as well, happy to see him. And Jadong as well getting a little bit of the limelight, so hopefully you can see a really good week here soon. Yeah, it should be a fun week. Uh, already had... Uh, Great time watching and casting the BSL challenge, uh, race challenge series, which is very, very similar to this format. It's uh, hosted by Zero of BSL. And uh, so a lot of casting today, a lot of race championship. It's great to see the foreigners picking up on this uh, format as well. No uh, mirror matchups at all. Just such a fun and interesting format. So... Love to see it getting spread around. Yeah, and it looks like Jadong's playing like super safe. He's just going to be going for a tried and true overpool here. And uh, Snow probably going to be doing like a 13 forge, like a delayed forge into Nexus here. Nothing too crazy from both players so far. Both playing very safe, very standard. I've seen that you can get away with Nexus first against this build. He went over... Uh, over pool here and no, he's not going to get greedy okay so he throws down the forge but i have seen protoss players get away with this uh, it's just very very tight like you might need to pull a few probes you might need to build a gateway in the wall and that type of thing but it's um definitely possible to make it happen here he's just going to go for the forge first and still going to get himself a good position looks like the third base for jadong thrown out way on the other side of the map look at that third base it's taking up here at the 12 o'clock now yeah it seems he just wanted to avoid getting the pro blocked as well so wanted to maybe get that set up earlier on at a far away distance where this probe wouldn't be able to delay that and uh, in turn going to be probably just bullying away this probe now to set up his third hatchery here at the natural. So a little bit of a wonky start, but just to avoid any shenanigans of snow being really annoying with this probe micro and delaying the timings that Jadon won't hit here. Well, you know what? This third base area is a lot easier to clog up with hatcheries. If you want to take this one? Yeah, right here. Um, it can be pretty easy to defend, maybe? I don't know. I've just never seen anybody take that as their third. It's usually the base right above your natural here because it's so much closer. It's so much easier to defend, but Jadong bucking the trend here. Let's see if it ends up paying off or he gets pulled apart by Snow's early zealot control. Yeah, you're not wrong though, saying usually it's this like the, the safe back pocket expansion you take later on in the game, not usually as your third base so early on, so a little bit of a peculiar choice, maybe to obfuscate and disguise exactly what he wants to do here, and it's going to be a 973 build out of Jadong, and it almost catches that scale probe, not quite though, Snow really on top of his multitasking here, and going to be keeping that alive, if he can sneak past this lanes, it's going to be huge, uh, being able to identify this uh, early on would be great, but Jadong's really on top of things, so I don't think that's going to transpire so i think for the time being he's going to manage to obfuscate that he wants to go for this 973 and it may be successful here i think the, the fact that it's also a, uh, the entrance uh, being horizontal like this also does benefit for a hydra bust here since the buildings are more wide than they are tall so it does help the hydras target down the wall and it does also force the protoss player to build his cannons right up against the wall if he wants to defend it which makes it even easier to hydra bust because then you don't even need range you can just shoot the cannons over the wall easily Right, and I don't know about this third base being up here now um, at the 12 o'clock. This is as far as it gets for a Hydralis bus. Like, taking maybe the other main base would be a little bit farther, but um, this is going to be difficult to execute here with Jadon 
uh, sending hydras from this far away and more links are coming out here he's kind of disguising the fact that he's going for this by building a lot of drones over at this base and pumping out some links but there's still no link speed which might be starting to tip the hat here towards uh snow figuring out what is going on this probe likely gonna get taken out no just barely managing to slip away there's so many lings here uh making sure that he has enough to deny a zealot from coming out here and snow indeed isn't gonna send that zealot there's gonna be an opportunity here pretty soon but snow seems to have sniffed it out a little bit he has more cannons on the way here in the natural something fishy is going on and snow is gonna get prepared for a bust yeah and he's he's going up to three cannons which is like the base basic safety net you have to go for here and he's going to rely on this Corsair to figure out exactly what's coming his way he will let these cannons finish if he sees these hydras coming out here but he's looks like he's going to just pick away at this overlord then that will force Jadong to reveal these hydras and now he knows so he's going to let these two cannons finish up and he may even start a fourth cannon here in just a moment because he does need to be extra safe against this because if, if Jadong isn't just faking this and he is going to be committing to a hydra bus like this can kill him very soon there's enough, enough zerglings here they are even engage the zealots on the north where the hydras engage at the south and he might actually yeah force a big pro pull here very wise from snow to realize that he needs probes here as well because if jayong starts to just pick off one or two of these cannons and really softens up the defenses prematurely it's going to be much harder to stabilize this position and th this will maybe force jayong to to rethink his uh, decision making here and not actually fully commit to this and a very fast robo from snow do you want to go read this from here i think that might be his choice it's very good at like it's a really really quick solution to a hydralist bust yeah. if your opponent is going uh to to just commit to this and keep on trying to bust here uh, it takes a long time to get templars with storm to the front but a reaver can pop out relatively soon just walk over and it's basically held there's no way to bust through you know a bunch of cannons and a reaver with just pure hydra uh, at this stage of the game so it's a very quick solution However, it seems like Jadong is not going to continue with this Hydra bus. He's going to throw down a whole bunch of hatcheries, start to transition into a, a large amount of drones here, and take this into a later game. So we are going to see that situation uh, unfold here with the kind of it, interestingly placed third base. I don't think it's Reavers. I think it's DT drop. DT drop? Really? Yeah. Well, this is wild. So. Well, he's counting on the fact that Jadon won't have will have a late lair, which means his overlord speed will be very delayed. So if he's only got overlords like covering the ex the entrances to his natural and third, there's no overlord in the main base. So then we can just DT drop into the main, kill the drones, kill the hatchery, and then maybe the hydrogen. Wow, this is big brain. This is giga brain play from Snow. Actually, if that's what he's doing, uh, he's totally right. There's no way that uh, speed overload speed is going to be done here. I haven't seen this as a counter to. Uh, this play yet to, to the Hydra's bus yet, but he's sending a Hydra down here. Look at this, Jadong. He's gonna spot it. And as yeah. soon as he sees this, he knows what's coming here. Either a DP or a possibly a Reaver, but he should be popping out some overlords in his main base and bringing hydras back to defend wait he's not moving okay he is gonna move now i don't think he saw it i don't think he saw it fly over actually or he's not respecting the fact that this could be a dt at the very least um he took a long time before he started maneuvering down and these dts are gonna go in and just start slaughtering these drones very quickly at least three maybe four gonna go down four already have gone down five even and now gonna be able to come down here and start hitting the hatchery or the eggs that are morphing oh that actually pops out just in the nick of time so not going to be getting any additional damage just those initial five drones trying to split the dt's off left and right now to see if they can run around and get some of these drones come back in another drone going down um, two drones going down for that dt and a third so that's a total of eight drones kill that's a huge amount of damage maybe be able to get out with this dt well this is a, a funny thing that i've noticed a lot if you take a look at jadong's base he's got the spawning pool just above the hatchery between the mineral patch and the uh, gas guys are there and i've noticed on this map that if you transfer drones from natural to main your drones all go behind the mineral patches and that actually costed jadong uh several drones there so uh, that's something that i i just do automatically as a zerg player i think i think a lot of zerg players just automatically send their or just just build their spawning pool there for no real reason other than that's where they always put it and it gets kind of punishing on this map so 
Um, funny to see Jadong uh, copy that as well and, and <laughs> have a hard time or actually lose drones because of it. <laughs> yeah, it looks like Jadong just going to be pumping out like four minimal scourge just to bully away the Corsair harassment for the time being while pumping out as many hydras as he can. I don't think he has the kind of gas right this second to make a large amount of muters. He may want to instead just go straight into lurkers here, but at least be careful with these small uh, forces of um, hydras getting bullied around the map as he tries tries to get some reinforcements this north base. Pretty good Sim City setup though. The Zealots will not be able to have good surface area to break this. And now Jadon's reinforcements gonna even get the snipe on that DT on the exit as well. So a little bit of stabilization finally for Jadon. And the supplies, relatively speaking, look actually pretty okay for Jadon. And he has got lurkers out already with tech um, pretty much um, stabilized now. He's got his upgrades on the way. So all things considered, this might be a little bit Jadon favored. This is a very quick and easy uh, fourth base to take now for Jadong as well. It's well protected by the rallies coming out. So I actually, uh, you know, I was a little bit questioning the placement of that fourth base earlier on, but I'm starting to see the, the benefits here uh, from Jadong uh, coming up with a, a new way of playing it out on this map. I'm liking it right here. Now he's going to come forward with some lurkers. Just the first three lurkers trying to start this containment. We did have a very fast... A robo from snow but i don't see an observer right now the storms were pretty good and jadong will get forced back a little bit but he's going to take over this high ground and things are going to get a little difficult here for snow if he doesn't have an observer out pretty soon oh there it is okay he's got it out already yeah, I mean, uh, he should be able to keep Jadong at bay here and secure his own third base, but Jadong might want to still maintain his position up on this high ground for as long as possible and make it a little bit annoying for Snow to come out here. He does want to... Yeah, he's going for his third base already, and uh, well, he's even got the Dark Scourge. Archon just waiting for the Maelstrom, so... Uh, Scourge are coming. Works. Can he catch this? There's a drop coming in. Look, look at... Oh, come on, look at it, look at it, look at it. Oh! Oh, oh. oh. Yeah, beautifully done. Yeah, it does manage to get two of the Zealots out, but not quite what he wanted to achieve there. He wanted to get in the main base and cause a lot of mayhem, and instead Jadon kind of on top of everything here. I think he should have like taken a little bit more of a strategic path in navigating that shuttle rather than just going on a straight course to the main base there. One maybe should have gone down to the bottom right pocket of the map a little bit more. Yeah, for sure. Well, no, uh, Jadon already knew that there was a uh, shuttle out on the map, so he was aware. He was uh, building Scourge, getting prepared for that, and he catches it. That's just another uh, thing in his favor right now. To I thought what he was going to do is hold, actually, the... Uh, the containment here on Snow, but he's actually backed away from that, surprisingly. Not even going to lose a drone here either. That's pretty good, but he's given up this plateau, and now Snow's going to be able to move out. Taking his own plateau back yeah. at home and just moving to four base really fast. I don't mind this from Jadon. I actually think this is really smart, because I think that right now that the scales of power are a little bit Snow favored for just a few moments, but this gives Jadon just a few precious seconds to get a few more lurker rounds out, a few more extra units to the rally point, and now with his own high ground plateau to low ground transition, this is much harder for Snow to break into now that there's a much more full fight position with many more lurkers than would have been if Snow was just breaking up his own ramp. So I actually like this a lot from Jadong. He needs to be careful though not to give any space for free here to Snow and keep forcing many resources out. Maelstrom does go down with the storm combination, killing off about eight or so Hydras uh, initially. But there is a big spread of lurkers here to make it very challenging for Snow to get up here. He hasn't got quite a formidable force of Dragoons raining down onto those Hydras on the high ground with their phase disruption shots with the 2-1 armor weapon combo. But 2-1 also ready for Jadong as well so still trading pretty cost efficiently and as long as he doesn't get stormed to death here as he tries to keep these forces at bay i think Jadong's in a pretty strong position oh, really great trades here from Jadong. the way that he is controlling uh, just small groups of hydras making sure that nothing is uh, too cost efficient here for snow really uh, inspiring here and now the observers are going to come forward there's an opportunity to snipe he actually storms his own observer and loses yeah. it that's a little bit rough only one observer remains and more small groups of hydras just poking out here grabbing some more kills to doing some more damage a nice maelstrom to pick those off but uh, this is just small small fry stuff for uh jadong he's trying to trade little by little here picking off some templar now gets a couple more i don't think that snow's going to be able to break this the way that it's going here jadong seems to be completely stable and he should be going into hive here relatively soon 
Yeah, no, Tavila, Tavila Mountain's actually already on the way, saying I think it just finished up. And uh, meanwhile, Snow just going to be inversely taking this expansion at 9 o'clock, getting up into full base. Got his 2 2 upgrades finished now. Jadong also going to be ramping up his own production, making more and more hatcheries, going up to about 7 to 9 hatchery production at bare minimum. It's going to be really tough for Snow to break into it. At the moment, I think he just wants to trade and keep skirmishing with Jadong. Pretty good storms there, taking out the majority of the Hydra Force, but Jadong's like macroing on all cylinders right now. A lot of units are pouring out of these hatcheries to reinforce so at the very best snow can just hope to trade well and keep skirmishing with him while he's expanding but look at jadong he's already causing like a little bit of a counter attack here on the nine o'clock killing some of the cannons that are being made and now harassing the mining of snow and kind of pulling the army around on the map as well now the army's like retreating from what they were doing at the front now they're not even skirmishing the front anymore and instead they're on like defensive measures only and this is giving jadong a lot even more breathing room to just keep macroing up larger and larger portions of red virus to just spread out onto the map and keep consuming these like pockets of blue units that try to um, dart forward and skirmish but he's doing a pretty good job of do dodging around the map with his hydras dodging all these storms killing high tempers when he can so far everything is going jadong's way snow i think it'll be a bit of a turning point here if snow can stop jadong from expanding anymore and avoid taking too many like just huge plagues onto his army over and over again maybe uh, snow can stabilize this game state a bit more but as it stands i really do feel like jadong's in control his own yeah. While Snow has that map control here, he's not covering this bottom pathway, which could become really painful if Jadon gets over there towards that uh, third base of Snow and gets a Dark Storm down there. Uh, this might become a real problem. Meanwhile, Snow is fighting up a ramp against Dark Swarm. That's not going well. One Zealot here catching onto this army before it makes its way into position. Two Templar are available, but they don't have energy. He could snipe these really quickly before... Uh, they get that energy and the uh, resources to defend here. Dark Storm comes down, but it's actually going to help the Zealots to clear this. He's just going to focus the Nexus. Nexus is going to go down really, really fast here. Jadon taking a big win in this fight. Yeah, I mean, Snow just got this 9 o'clock base online. Now he's reset back to 3 base economy against a 4 base Zerg. This is not a place you really want to be in at this point in the game state. It's really not favoring Snow at all. Has got some ability to try and get away here with this army to join up with his rally forces. But Jadong's already on top of things and already is in hot pursuit of these units, sniping off some of these high templars before they can even retreat back to the safety of their home base here. And this is really unfortunate for Snow because now the supplies are actually kind of like evening out. This is really really rough spot to be in as Protoss player this really does kind of seem to indicate that Snow is at risk of being bowled over here in a few moments soon this is a great opportunity for Jadong to snag the other plateau so he's gonna move to take that spot he's actually coming down here towards the fourth base oh wow a maelstrom goes down on these units I think that's gonna run out in time for Jadong to spread those out before storms can uh, polish them off but uh, I mean, he slows down the attack here into the fourth. Now the remainder of the forces are coming up here for Snow. He's going to be able to hit this from the back, and it doesn't look like Jadon can kill this base, but he will get rid of the cannons here. He does lose control of the other plateau, though, and he doesn't have another base coming up on online. There is one being started in the very top left-hand corner. That's kind of an unlikely base, but... Oh, this one down here as well. Look at that. Um, taking double expansion on either side of the map. Let's see how that goes. Oh, DT gonna get this. Wow, that is a huge kill right there. Yeah, that's a huge win for Snow. Mitigating as much of this utility available to Jadong is critical here. There's a lot of dark swarms and plagues that are going to become a nightmare for him soon. And he's doing a good job of weathering the storm for the time being while he gets this expansion at the mid that, um, bottom right base back up online while he also gets his defenses secured here. But yeah, like you say, Jadong expanding uh, opposite ends of the map double and, and double succession like this. This does seem to be on pace to still favor Jadong with 3-2 uh, upgrades finished now on these units. Units, and I imagine melee upgrades going to be finishing soon to make these cracklings even more potent. As soon as plague starts to become more relevant, this is going to be when the cracklings start to shine. They only become super relevant against Protoss when plague is a factor because it's just so much harder to chew through the Protoss army against Storm, against Goons and Elots. And if you don't have that, like the, only having to chew through their shields just makes it so much easier to gobble through those Protoss units. So if we see that soon, like clumps of units getting plagued over and over again, I think there's going to be lights out here for Snow. 
but if he keeps his army spread, keeps moving around the map and, you know, keeps fluid, I think that there's still a chance here for Snow to get a win, but I think it's going to be tough. Yeah, he's going to have to punish these bases or shut down some of these bases on opposite sides of the map. You can't allow both of them to come up, that's for sure. You'd like to deny uh, both of them, but there's a big plague, the first one of this match another great play here on a ton of different zealots and snow's army is looking kind of weak now with all their red hp here plus he's not able to get in on this base in the top left bottom right is starting to get really well fortified lurkers here on high ground this plateau is going to be taken by jadong okay i don't like him stacking his lurkers quite like that but hey um, maybe you can get that Archon. One Storm is actually going to wipe out four Lurkers here if he's not careful. So he actually backs away. This is good. Going to head up into the top left-hand corner, I guess. He's going to do a bit of a defensive play here. Has an opportunity to snipe some of these. One, two, three. Oh, almost gets all three. Plagued Templar go down so fast to Hydras. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they absolutely do. They've only got 40 shield, 40 um, hit points. And without any armor, they just seem to melt and uh, like most of the Protoss army seems to melt with its play. It's very hit point and armor heavy, so once you do have those units plagued and shields are the main factor, it's so much easier to clean up these units. They are like glass cannons at that point. And oh, look at this storm drop in the top left, getting quite a few drone kills. And while meanwhile, Jadon try, still trying to assault the rally point area of snow and maybe get this base again in the bottom right pocket, but I don't think this time it's going to be successful. There's just a little bit too much here for snow, but he is diverting the attention away from snow launching his own attacks on these expansions. Meanwhile, Jadon J J just had been churning out as many units as possible to keep smashing into Snow, who's now mined out on his bases, back down to a two-base economy. So this could work out for Jadon in this war of attrition. I like what Jadon is doing right now. He's forcing Snow to run into Lurkers over and over again, and now he's hitting another base. Starting to break through a little bit here. Bringing all the defenses from the top left, though, in order to make this happen. So if it doesn't work, and there's lots of army left over, he could end up losing that base in the top left. He's going to kill all the probes, though. The lurker spines here at the end are crazy. Got to target a little bit more here. One more storm goes down. The lings are killing off a few of the last probes. Jadong needs to get over here to the top left to save this base, but he's done a good job killing a bunch of probes here at the fourth. Yeah, Jadong's doing like the one-two punch thing over and over again. Like he sends one army to nine o'clock and then he comes down to six and he seems to rinse and repeat this maneuver, force the Parallel army out of position, and then try another attack onto this other plateau, get in as, mi as many kills as on this rally army as we can, and then try and maybe kill the expansion or at least force good traits as the army comes in to reinforce. And it so far has really worked out for him. Supplies starting to tip into Jadong's favor, actually. Play coming down on the Nexus and cannons, just trying to really ram home his advantage at the moment. And even if he's trading at just a 40-50% efficiency, that's all he really needs to do right now. He's mining on way more bases than Snow. Only two base economy for the Protoss play. He will eventually become starved out if this game state maintains for any longer soon. No Templar drops down to this bottom right. I'm not even sure that Snow is aware of that base right now. Otherwise, I'm sure he would be trying to do something about that. That's pretty uh, undefended mineral line over there. And Jadong getting away with murder a bit, but he's just putting on so much pressure. It's not giving Jadong any room to breathe or to think here. Uh, with uh, army just coming into his rally point and sniping Templars constantly, how is he supposed to get out there and actually deal with any of these bases on the map? It's not it's kind of an afterthought uh, behind survival at this point. And I don't know if he's even going to be able to survive. The rallies are coming forward here. More and more lings to the front lines. Dragoons are just getting popped and all the storms get thrown down, but the Templar are dying over and over again and never making Archons here. This is getting really, really desperate. I think that Jadong has just done it here. Yeah, I think Jadon's just like spitting dragon fire and melting this snowman. I don't think he can weather this. Like, he's done a good job of maintaining his form, but eventually he will melt, you know. This is not looking like a tenable position. He's getting this expansion killed down here with these cracklings. He's losing so much of his army. He's 30 supply behind Jadon, who's now almost maxed out on his upgrades. Just uh, one upgrade left remaining on his melee. 
Snow is 323 on his um, Protoss infantry, which is pretty good, but against 3-2 three, three, Cracklings, 3-3 three, three Hydras and Lurkers, and this amount of insurmountable forces that you're having to fight against, there's so many more drones than probes mining right now, and even uh, more favored on the army side of things as well, so everything is in Jadong's favor right now. It's basically his game to lose. It should be an unlosable position for him. Uh, Snow's making a few desperate attempts of like getting a few DTs around on the map, see if he can get anything work in his favor, but Jadong's dotted his eyes and crosses the T's meanwhile doing all of this, so those expansions are also pretty well defended against any kind of harass shenanigans, so it looks like it's going to be lights out here for Snow in a few moments now. Dude, Jadong is so scary when he gets to a, a good macro position when a player like Snow's not able to really pull him apart or, you know, deal early damage. He's so scary to watch. He's just got an amazing ability to crank out Zerg units and bring them to the front line in the right points and the right times here. Great, great job for Jadong. First game of the day takes out Snow. I was not expecting that, but really, really well done. It's the clapper from KCM. Incredible game number one here in our third week, season two. All right, Jadong really impressing me there with that last game. Um, I love the, the location of the third that he took. I thought it was genius, the tightness of that base. It's so hard to get in there with Zealots. I never really thought about that as the fourth, although we do see it, or the third, excuse me, although we do see it against Terran sometimes, you'll take that as your third uh, going for Hygelus Defiler because it is a little tighter when it comes to defense with Lurker, right? I just never expected it to work that well against the player of uh, Snow's Caliber in, in ZVP. Yeah, I mean, and, and Snow's DT drop actually was relatively successful. It didn't get maybe as much damage as he wanted, mm. but it did kill eight drones. It wasn't like it was a failure of a DT drop, you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah, all things considered, that was a really impressive performance from Jadong. I'm really excited to see mine versus Jadong. Not a matchup I expected to see, but one I'm really looking forward to saying a very quick drone scout from Jadong. So if this was going to be any form of CC first or eight racks, this would be shut down immediately and harassed to death. So really nice to see the sharp drone stats drone scout time did you catch your feet no he didn't um extractor trick to get this drone uh, extra drone out um so instead just gonna send that nine drone it does hurt your economy a little bit though and since he's building a uh, one racks uh expansion here uh, this is kind of favoring mine now, right? The the early drone yep. is great in principle to shut down some of those uh, aggressive plays, um, and, or like really cheesy, not not cheesy, really like uh, aggressive macro plays like the CC first. But in this case, I mean, run racks FE is just so good. Uh, already, yeah. even from a normal game state, uh, here it's just going to be that much stronger. He's trying his best to deal some damage to this SCV. He's done some, but Mind is doing a good job staying on top of that, and even with zero range, hitting that uh, drone over and over again. It's pretty darn low now, and he will finish this. Yeah, but Jadong's just trying to get some compensation on this scout timing. If he can get the kill, it's even better. It does lose the drone instead. A little bit of uh, over-aggression there for Jadong gets really punished for it. Just saying that he was getting some compensation on the extra SCV being pulled off to repair and to chase the drone. So he's getting a little bit of mining time compensation for having that drone invested early. But if he loses the drone like that, that's really rough. So overall, everything is still slightly edged towards mind, all things considered. So Jadong's just going to be a little bit slower relativistically in dealing with mind here. Yeah, nothing that he can't uh, bring back though with some good control and good decision making here as the game goes forward that'll matter less and less it's just a bit rough to start from a deficit against a player the caliber of mind he's going to put the pressure on you and he knows exactly how to do so putting down the wall here at the front with the one racks fen a gas already is this going to be just a really quick plus one or are we going to see a factory here yeah no it's going to be a plus one i imagine yeah okay. just a plus 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 one build that's how i imagine he would do it does suit his style as well so taking the advantage here and rather than trying to push it by uh, you know going for a two racks pressure play here to force out sunken colonies from jadon he's instead 
gonna go right into plus one and uh, maybe do like a later push out try to shut down the mutilus a bit harder maybe go directly into three racks something like that we've seen a little bit of resurgence of like four racks five racks play but uh, i don't think that's what we're gonna see out of mind here yeah i think you, you might be right about that i think it's gonna be pretty pretty standard play from him he's just gonna He's identifying that Jadon's also going for 2.5 hatch. He knows that Jadon wants to try and catch up in the curve of the game by having extra lava available to him so he can squeeze out more drones and what have you and not maybe necessarily commit to as many muters in the early game as normal because he wouldn't be able to hit those sharp timings anymore to punish Mind with that deficit of minerals early on. So instead, going to be doing a much more conservative macro approach, which, which pretty much gives Mind the opportunity to do a much more tech... Um, uh, favored build by getting this early plus one to get a stronger mid game up lined up against Jadong's a little bit delay tech here might be able to skimp on turrets here with the number of marines he's going to be pumping in that early plus one uh, he's going to have a very strong ground army that might uh, compensate for a little lack of turrets here but Jadong moving out to take his third base now, further probably delaying his uh, overall uh, mutilus count here. This, look at his minerals, very, very low right now, and he's just about ready to start pumping those out. It's going to be a slow trickle coming across the map to mind. I, I imagine he won't need more than just a couple of uh, turrets here to defend what Jadong's going to be putting down. Well, I think this was Jadong's plan all along to try and uh, fi fix the problems he had earlier on. And I think Mind anticipated this. So mm. Mind has already like set himself up. Be like, okay, you're going to be greedy and you're not going to make that many muters initially. So I'm going to be super greedy myself here. We see no turrets on the way just yet. Even a few comsats coming down to scan and confirm uh, his suspicions as well. That's going to be really important to Mind. Uh, he doesn't have an SCV scout anymore. So he needs to just confirm that his suspicions are true when he sees how many drones have been made and how many muters are on the way and then he'll be able to min max to the absolute extreme here and probably will be putting a little bit of a pressure onto jade on when he does have a small window to do so but for the time being wants to be very careful he's the first scan going into the main so he's pretty much like nothing too scary so he's probably pretty confident that jade power droned at the moment and he has actually done that he's pretty much droned as heavily as he could and, and he does a uh, Big get scan. A scan in the top left and see the big drone transfer as well. So he knows exactly what the game state is like right now. And that's going to be probably making mine feel a little bit more confident about how he's lined himself up here. And we'll be able to put on a lot of pressure. Has actually made a lot of turrets back at home, which makes me think that mine is setting himself up to be very aggressive in the moment. And he wants to be able to push across the map without having to worry about any backstab potential from Jadon. Right, I think you're you're onto something there. Mind respecting the potential for Midalus here, maybe a little bit too much, but he does have a good group of Marines moving out now with that plus one. I I don't know. I think that Jadong's gotten away with quite a bit here though, and now he can yeah. switch into full Mutalist production, and there's not really anything that Mind can do just yet. He's gonna have to combine another group of. Marine Medic here pretty soon, otherwise it's just going to get overwhelmed, I feel. Yeah, I think mine maybe is like miscalculated the game a little bit because now Jadon's got a huge window to really punish this bio force and with a full stack of muters, as long as he can keep these uh, bio units dogged and under control, he'll be in a good game state. Right now, the, the bio ball is in two two blobs, one fighting one stack of muters while the others are trying to advance across the map right now. Oh, might catch no! these... well, yeah, he might catch these muters. He's not paying attention though. Those Marines are on move command. He could have shot at least two, maybe killed two of those muters there easily, but wasn't paying attention mind unfortunately for him big window of opportunity completely missed i feel like he needed to get that the damage done there because right now an even supply he wants to go in with a big muta link force to try and stab this bio ball if he can whittle it down just a little bit more so mine needs to be really careful here because if you lose just too many more of these marines he'll be gobbled up yeah this is this is definitely an attempt by Jadon to wipe out this forest bring in the lings and the extra mutas here right here right now taking out everything from mind and this shutdown is going to be insane swing here for Jadong. He's brought this from wow. back from kind of a, a small deficit in the early game to a really great position now with a huge swell of mutas here and uh, transition going to be coming behind this certainly more links coming up I think he was making these in preparation to you know take like two or three attempts to actually pick off 
uh, that total bio force, but he's now getting into the main base, killing off turrets, taking over the barracks right now. Is he actually just going to be able to finish? I expected a transition was going to have to occur, but he's just doing it. Yeah, he, but the Ling Rumble into the main is really tough to stabilize as Terran. He can use these Lings to pick off turrets and he can camp over the barracks with the muters. At the very least, he's going to be doing game-ending damage here, even getting the SCB the snipes on the science vessel, delaying the tech. There's now no clock on the vessels to shut out this mutilist harassment, so he's just going to camp on top of these barracks all day long, streamlining Lings across the map. He has a checkmate move here that he's going for. There's no way mine can stabilize this vision anymore gg finally gonna be called and jadong showing some serious dominance in this week of kcm and i'm all about it saying is he gonna go all the way and just start destroying everyone here we go with game number three guys ysc sent out here the hero from last week for protoss will he be able to take games off of Jadong here and others in this lineup it's looking a it's looking pretty scary but honestly last week's lineup for both Zerg and Terran was a little scarier don't you think yeah absolutely um although the Protoss lineup had way better showing than we anticipated right mm -hmm. like we, we thought it was kind of like just be thrown against the wall and go splat but actually we had a really exciting week and the yeah, I would like to see YSE perform well here today as well, but so far Jadong's on fire, he's got a lot of momentum and confidence behind him right now, and someone like YSE might just go splat uh, against the wall this time as well, so hopefully not, hopefully we see a really good PBZ here, but I'm a little bit worried for YSE. Well, YSE, is he actually, yeah, he spotted the creep here, this is interesting, he's gonna wait a little bit, let's come in now. Let's see if there's a spawning pool here. He sees none, and now he will have the opportunity to deny. So I guess sitting outside uh, of that creep, um, show, not showing the probe so that a spawning pool wouldn't start on time, but he does get the block here, which is a little bit interesting. He should go for the Nexus, yeah. Definitely going to go for the Nexus here. Nexus first, pretty darn good uh, starting a position here for YSC. This is all enabled by him getting that first scout, by the way. A little bit of luck for YSC going the right way. This, this may have been the plan all along. Like, he may have um, even deliberately not got the block on the hatchery just to make sure that the pool didn't even go down um, a few seconds earlier, just to guarantee getting this. Because he knows that the Overlord is going to spot this 14cc, right? That's your 14, no, 12 Nexus. So he knows that's going to be spotted. But if he delays the pool going down, it makes it way harder to punish for Jaina. Right, he's not going to be able to do anything here to punish, and um, YSC putting the forge pretty far back here. A little bit interesting, the positioning right now. I think this is for uh, putting cannons farther forward. You want to, uh, this is for a Protoss player that really doesn't want to get uh, Hydra busted and uh, killed or lose his forge in the early game. But uh, it's a little bit funny to see here. The positioning is looking a little bit weird. Oh, he's going to catch his probe. Oh, the shield HP regenerated just as he got the spine hit, unfortunately. So one HP probe yet again going to be sneaking away from that. Still being blocked by this pylon. And a little bit annoying for Jadong to have to deal with. He's going to throw down the macro hatchery instead, which is probably the wise move. Because it's going to be taking him such a long time to kill that pylon. He needs to just get his production up and running. Yeah, it's, it's a good choice here, but it is a frustrating little bit of uh, damage that's been done by just a probe throwing down excess buildings that can be cancelled, and it looks like YSC will let it finish, um, but it's still such a small commitment to deal a lot of economic damage here. And probably guarantee that we're not going to see a Hydra Dent. Oh! Wow! Overlord died to the cannon? Oh no, Wait. No, 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 okay. When's the last time you lost an overlord to a cannon, Jun? Uh, a long time. And I'm really shocked that we're seeing it here, Sam, because that actually really cripples um, Jadon, because he just had an overlord finish, but now he's still supply block. This is the critical supply block of um, 18, yeah. Uh, Zergs. Yeah, and usually it's because you don't make the overlord, but this time Jadon made the overlord, but now he's supply block. So he just he's basically playing like a B-ranked player right now who just forgot his overlord, but it does really cripple your economy so heavily. And against the player of YSC standard, you're going to feel that burn later on. For sure. It's uh, almost an unforgivable mistake but maybe Jadon getting a little flustered by that pylon block and uh, the nexus first here 
is already a big advantage for YSC. He is coming across with just two zealots and trying to make something happen with a lot of links popping out here. He's going to shut this down completely, but this is a great win here for YSC regardless. He's forced out so many links and he's going to get the information down here at the uh, the third base. This is, this is fantastic stuff. He gets behind the mineral patches. Oh, dude, this is so frustrating for Jadon right now. He's got to be uh really really upset but he is gonna be able to run by with lings oh god the lings are being really annoying not wanting to run in there properly but he does manage to get about four or five in the main no almost getting caught there we'll get on top of some of these gas probes he needs to get like serious damage here in this base right now or he's gonna be so far behind i just don't see how he's gonna be able to bring this one back why is he in such an advantage not even gonna get one probe this is crazy yeah this is really rough it was a nice idea to go for this kind of backstab play to try and find some compensation in this game but why is he's just sewn up so tight this game and he's not really allowing these kind of tricks and shenanigans to get under his skin and is responding very fluidly with his reactions and his drone sliding and what have you so really impressive why is ability to remain composed under a little bit of pressure here and keep jail on the back foot even now the zealots coming out into full effect at six o'clock forcing off the mining not going to be getting the kills but even just delaying any mining here but Jadong's already a nightmare situation. He's not even mining at that base optimally because of the macro hatchery position. So it's really rough for Jadong to have to weather this early game and all these tiny little things with the overlord uh, supply block and that are going to really start to add up soon. He's trying desperately to find some kind of uh, compensation for this issues that he's facing early game, but he's not really finding it. Even the Zealot going to be surviving into the main base. I think it's a little bit of a mistake from Jadong. Didn't quite catch that. He killed one of the Zealots and ran back out again and now having to allow this cell to come behind his minerals and be even more annoying. Things are really starting to fall apart here for Jadong, but he's popping a bunch of mutas and looking for an opportunity here to maybe ogre zerg this guy. Um, although cannons are finishing up everywhere. Dude, YSC is just yeah. two steps ahead in every which way, and Jadong has fallen apart so dramatically here. He just doesn't have enough drones. He's going to be so far behind no matter what uh, he does with these mutas. No matter how, how much micro and the time and attention he puts into this is just not going to bring him back into this game he's got like five or so probe kills it's not too bad right now but it's not the kind of damage that he needs to really find his way again uh, he, he, he's trying to like he's slightly st stabilizing the scales of power like his win percent went up a few ticks there as he got a few drone kills uh, probe, probe kills but honestly not a lot um, this is still a really rough spot for him. He will have some map control for some time. Like, why is he won't feel comfortable moving out of his base until he's got six Corsairs at least of plus one. So he's got that going for him. He can now power drone a little bit and just chill and see if he can come back in here again and snipe a few more probes and just be a little bit, maybe get, a, oh, he gets a Corsair snipe. See, this is what I'm talking about. A few probe kills here and there, one Corsair snipe here and there. He can slowly balance out those scales of power while droning up back at home. So he's not out of this game by any means. He's going up to his six hatchery production like, like normal. It's just, it's taking him a long time to get there taking him a long time and doesn't quite have the drone number that he would regularly have but he's got like you said this map control right now and if he keeps picking off corsairs here that map control will remain firmly in his grasp here we go jamming on another couple of corsairs wow two more get picked off dude this is huge jadong is going to be able to maintain this control for a little bit longer and that means more drones, more opportunities to come back here for Jadon. Yeah, that's like championship mindset there, using like some finesse to do some very sneaky shenanigans. But this DT does get into the sixth club. Look at the timing of that Sunga Golly finishing up as well. Everything is just so perfect for Jadon. And the stars are aligning for his comeback in this game thus far. And with those Corsair snipes, really does put YSC into a tough spot. He can't come out onto the map. He has no map control at all. And not only that, but he's having to replace those Corsairs. So he's more gas investment going down the drain instead of storm, instead of upgrades that he valuably very critically needs at this point point in the game so everything's lining up for a Jadon comeback here and I, I feel like a little bit of 
issues from YSC is that he's not respecting Jadong's abilities and his control enough because anyone should know that Jadong of all people are going to be coming in there to snipe your Corsairs like that over and over again and he should be way more on top of his Corsair control in those situations and be willing to uh, micro them back whenever he needs to but unfortunately he just seems to be a little bit lazy against Jadong which I, I feel is going to be a really uh, come back to haunt him in a few moments here because Jadong's now going to get full control over this game. You cannot get complacent here as the Prodance player. You cannot just allow the uh, Zerg away back in. He set up a bunch of cannons, making sure that the Ogre Zerg play wasn't going to work, but it looks like Jadong is confident enough to dive in here again. There are three cannons here ready to fight, but a lot of these Corsairs are going to die. Three Corsairs go down to the Scourge. Is there enough splash damage here to push away the Mutas? It certainly seems so. Uh, that uh, one more Corsair actually... Wait, 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 what? That Corsair goes down as well. He almost takes control of the main base here. This was quite the gambit by Jadong, but uh, it works out pretty darn well. Another storm goes down. Uh, not exactly what he wanted, but he is really putting the pressure on YSC right now. Yeah, seven Mews actually beat three Corsair. It's just this cannon that's making the determining factor in the HP of the Mews. But now the Scourge coming in to zone out the Corsairs while sniping the cannons that are being made. A storm is needed to keep softening up these muters and he might get a good snipe on this high tempo. Oh, tries to get a good predictive storm, but instead just going to be getting sniped himself. Beautiful play from Jadon. All these muters are dangerously low on HP as well. So if YSC was a little bit more astute with his um, determining where to storm there, Jadon could have lost a lot, a lot of muters for not even killing the High Templar. But instead, Jadon's confident gamble paid off, and he's doing everything right so far. And actually ahead in supply, saying after that disastrous start. Wow, that is something to behold, man. Jadon's control and his confidence and playing this mutilist style is something to behold a third base will be coming down here there's the corsairs getting some more damage on the mutas they don't have much hp left so uh, taking a fight at this point probably not going to be possible but he's looking to dive again i think he wants to just get the snipes on the corsairs uh, if he can uh, while trying to take potentially a fourth base. He's got a drone out here. He hasn't tried to take this just yet. Full-on Hydra production behind this has begun because Jadong has the numbers. He's got the, the drone count now to make it happen. I just don't think he has what it takes to actually kill this third base now. He's probably going to have to try and extend this game out a little bit further uh, instead. Yeah, I think um, the aim of the game here is just keep maintaining map control, killing these Corsairs like we see here, while also trying to grow himself. But so far has been slowed down in taking that fourth base. That's still active, just retreating now. But yeah, Lurker going to be the transition here from Jadong as a follow-up. Hasn't got a lot of ground forces built up just yet and hasn't got this fourth on the way. So if YSC can get this third base uncontested which seems to be the case does seem to be getting dove on a little bit here but has uh, enough forces to ward away the continued uh, threats of Jadong for the time being so we'll be getting this third base up uncontested Jadong's going to be expanding to the bottom right natural expansion and uh, maybe getting a the fifth base for free as a result of doing that and we'll have a better saturation of minerals available to him instead of taking that mineral only as well so I actually kind of like this play from Jadong taking this as his expansion um, we'd like to see him maybe even take two two bases right now, but uh, seems to be confident just to try and push up this lane against uh, YC. I think it's a little bit of a mistake from Jadon to commit this heavily with just a small pocket of units. Gets a little bit of a surround on some of the Dragoons, but with just these, uh, it seems like he really wants to lock out the, the third base from having any unit con uh, flow, but I don't think that's going to be successful. I think there's a little bit of an overextension here from Jadon, but I, I guess he's banking on the fact that Observers are so late. I haven't seen Observatory yet. No, the robot just just finishing up here in the natural observatory gonna start now it's funny that he's doing a style like this no hydras have really been brought to bear thus far he's switching all the way into lurker lane a uh, late game here uh, yeah. at a very early point in this game so many drones being made and sent down to the bottom right I, I mean, th is this kind of crazy quick transition going to work out for him? He, it, he's going into Defiler Mound, and it's only 13 and a half minutes in. He's going to have that 14-minute Defiler, despite all the madness that's gone on this game. A very quick, interesting transition here for Jadon into the latest stages of the game. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of like it so far, but he need, this is the, the most flimsy uh, junction of the game for him. Though. There is a moment here where YSC can amount a very formidable force to just try and bottle Jadong over in the next like minute of the game. So 
Jadong's gonna have to really stabilize his position and make sure he's got enough lurkers to just spread out and not have anything threaten him for quite some time because there will be a lot of window here for YC to get some damage done. Gonna be escorting this shuttle into the main base. There is no overlords here if there's his DTs, but it might just be a storm drop to kill as many drones as possible, which should be successful in and of itself. If he does get some critical damage done to Jadong's economy right now while he's supply blocked as well, this could be huge. Oh, it's gonna be DTs, okay. Four DTs in the main. Lots of really, really rough attack. You can kill so many buildings as well. It's not just a threat to the drones here, like a storm drop, but to the tech as well. You can go after the spawning pool, the defiler's mound. You can even go after the hive here if you so choose. And with the uh, uh, Forceros here to deny the overlords from coming back, you're going to have to bring a lot of forces, a lot of hydras to this defense. He's bringing so many overlords. He just doesn't have the hydra force, though, um, to deal with this. The Defiler is going to go down. The Spire is going to go down. The Mound is going down as well. Scourge are being brought forward finally to push this back. But he's going to lose even the Evolution Chamber as well. Dude, this is so rough. Everything was going really, really well for Jadong. But this one move from YSC is shutting him down brutally right now. Well, Jadong couldn't bring his infantry force to clean this up because he was too worried about the, the army of um, YSC hitting a base while he did that. So he had to wait for the muters to come and clean it up instead because he knew if he used his main army that eventually he would just get overrun at another location. So Jadong's kind of like knows he's between a rock and a hard place right now. He knows this is the most critical timing where I was saying a moment ago where this is where things can fall apart for Jadong. He's at his most flimsy right Right now he's trying desperately to stabilize throwing up the uh, nidus canal um, networks and as many creep colonies and sunglasses as he can he's got um his defiler mound being remade on that right side of the map but look at this follow-up drop into the main base gonna be targeting the drones and the spawning pool making it harder and harder for jadon to concentrate dealing with these attacks as well while also he does get the, the observer snipes here to shut down this this push though so why is he left to rely purely on storms if he wants to break through meanwhile though those zealots did kill that pool in the main base so now jadon have to remake that spawning pool just to make lings that's really annoying at this stage yeah it's very annoying he should be able to pick off that shuttle though finally uh, that threat is going to be removed here but meanwhile why is he just expanding everywhere look at he's taking bases over at the top center he's getting into robotic support base so he's going to go into the latest stages here uh the the reaver play that uh tier three tier four type zer or protoss army uh, versus Zerg is going to be hitting the field here soon. Some great snipes uh, on some of these Templar that are reinforcing this army, but uh, most of the mutas go down. A lot of lings fall as well. I, I don't know. I don't know. This is this is uh, not looking like Jadon can really do anything to YSC here, and YSC has done a huge amount of damage to him. We are going to get into that really like Sauron Zerg style, though, with five bases coming up here pretty soon. Can he deny the top right-hand corner from YSC, though? That's going to yeah, be the once question. The, yeah, once Jadong finally catches up in the tech again because the Defiler Mount snipes, it is going to slow down the plague timing quite significantly. But Jadong does still have the infrastructure behind him to really put on a, a big Sauron Zerg threat to YSC. He's actually currently ahead in supply by about 20. He can definitely bowl YSC over, but he has been significantly slowed down in his attempts. And because that Defiler tech is so late, it's going to make it harder for these Cracklings to get the value that they need. And it will give some time to YSC to secure additional expansions, go up to five, maybe six bays, get this top right corner set up and just split the map in half and then go into like super late game and overwhelm Jadong that way. Definitely would give him a win condition. But as it stands, I actually really like Jadong's position. It's just a little bit of a, a slow burner for him because of how much slowed down he has been with these uh, technical plays of YSC. Yeah, the Defiler is out finally. It's 18 minutes in. He was about to have a 14 minute Defiler though. Yeah. Um, and he's just been slowed down so much. This Defiler should already have uh, all upgrades done, but we don't have Plague yet. And there's an opportunity here for YSC to maybe make a play towards bottom center. I don't know if he's going to be able to get in there, though. It seems like he's just taking a position and daring Jadong to come and fight him. He might end up getting surrounded, though. This is such a good defensive position for Jadong. And the army could come around through the Nidus Canal and, and hit this from behind, trapping it in this corner why is he just gonna pull out immediately he doesn't want any part of that 
Yeah, I mean, if he doesn't want an unwanted pregnancy, he better pull out saying that's all I can say. Does have a pretty good position on this right-hand side ridge line. Kind of do like it, but not that many high templars at his disposal. Needs to be careful not to get swallowed up from behind here. Oh, I guess that'll... Snipe on that. Yeah, the shower goes down as well. This is... Everything is going so well for Jaynor. He's, he's still, like, almost 30 supply up as well. Like, oh honestly, gosh. despite 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 him looking really flimsy earlier on, he's done a really great job of maintaining his lead, and now he's in full on. Saron's uh, macro mode, and he's going to be getting that plague finished up soon. Could could maybe get some more of these high templar signs with these mewers if he's active enough as well. Hasn't really been super. Oh, finally, plague is done. Saying this is when things are really going to kick up into high gear now. We got a maxed out Zerg. Wow, Jadong doing something that is incredibly difficult, which is uh, continuing to macro even after getting. Uh, your entire tech tree sniped. He didn't lose his hive, but he lost his defiler mound. He lost so much of his main base, but he's managed to pull everything together here. And the Sauron Zerg is going to start to hit the field. This small, wimpy little army here in the middle for YSE is not looking like it's going to be able to stand much longer as the plagues come through and Lings start to flood the map. It's going to be really, really tough for YSE to start to take top right. He hasn't even set up uh, any pylons or cannons over in that location. He does have Reavers at top center. Yeah. And he is currently on five bases with three of them still mining here. But Jadong is just going to keep on growing. It looks like his next target is going to be center right. Try and take that base as well. As Muta's still flying around top right. Just making sure that YSE has no easy time of taking another base right now. Yeah, I mean, YSC's got pretty decent upgrades right now, 2 1 3, but it, it doesn't really matter. Like, we've got a maxed out Zerg that's going to be confident just to keep chucking army at you over and over again to trade, setting up these fortified positions with lurkers and swarms so you can't break into the deeper lines of the Zerg. Meanwhile, just attack moving in, big conga lines of red streaming across the map eventually will force the Protoss play into retreat. And meanwhile, um, he doesn't even need to take the three o'clock base or some time. He's got enough gas in the bank that just taking these mineral onies is going to be more than sufficient. Meanwhile, I don't think Snow is going to be able to take um, the top right for quite some time. And oh my God, he's lost so many high templates in the top left of those muted. That's crazy. Um, right now though, Snow's not looking like, sorry, uh, YSC's not looking too bad on paper, but it, 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 yes, he's got like the Reavers at 12 o'clock. It's going to be hard for Jaron to break these bases, but the longer this game goes on, the more of a win percentage Jadon has. It's really tough for YSC to navigate further in this game he's gonna be able to trade and skirmish for quite some time but he's not gonna be able to break Jadong and he's not gonna have an easy time of setting up these bases in the top right he's trying now while Jadong's distracted on the left hand flank here to set up some cannons and what have you in the top right to secure these bases maybe but I don't think it's gonna to be too successful here it's gonna to be tough to get those up if he has a, a shuttle maybe he can bring a couple of reavers over here that makes it a lot harder to break in that is still a win condition that maybe YSC could make happen, but Jadong, I've been watching his supply, and even as masses of Zerg are falling, his supply is staying at roughly 200 supply. He's just macroing like an absolute god, whereas YSC is barely passing 160 at any point in this game. Jadong's just shoving forward Reavers here in the mix now. Even a Dark Archon is coming out here, maybe to feed back some of these defilers but hydra's lings are all it's going to take to pick this off he snipes the shuttle that is a huge pick two reavers were inside of that and this base is just going to go down really really fast what are you going to do now uh ysc you've got only one base mining here in just a moment as center left starts to mine out He's, he's, he's almost double the supply of YSC right now. It's absolutely bonkers that he's not only maxed, he's staying maxed out while fighting the Protoss player. He's, he's re, re maxing constantly while fighting, and he's just whittling down the Protoss again and again and killing more bases. There's no way the top right can go up now, and eventually YSC will run out of gas in this game. He's going to maybe make a, another minute or two effort here to try and hold on, but there's just no way he can get this base up in the top right anymore. Jadon's going to cripple this in the few moments. I wonder what happened at the main natural and third here for Jadong. There's no drones that I can see mining any minerals over there, but um, 
Uh, I think we might have missed something. Either that or Jadong just transferred all the workers to the forward bases so that he could suck up the minerals there as quickly as possible and keep the minerals in the main and natural in reserve. Maybe for later, just in case this game goes long. I don't know, but uh, Jadong is scouring the map here. He's clearing out top right. He's just overwhelming YSC at every level. YSC, a formidable opponent. But against a five base Jadong, not even a challenge here. Yeah, yeah I think you're absolutely right that, um, with the drone assessment as well. He definitely wants to like keep his uh, saturation as optimal as possible. So he has uh, as many minerals at his disposal at any given time. So there's no comeback potential for YSC at any point. Just look at this war of attrition that Jadong's raining on him. Like, this must be like, what it feels like to fight against like the Tyranids or something. It's just nothing you can do. Eventually, just overwhelm you with like sheer numbers and like calculate assessments while Jadong impressing the shit out of both of us here Shun this guy just crazy the way he's able to bring games back from the brink and uh, I mean the late game play there from him in both these two past games is just so so good so impressive to watch yeah, not only that, but he's getting to those stages of the game after taking such heavy deficits. Like, so much went wrong for him at the start of that last game, and he's still pulling through that strong. It's kind of unfathomable, honestly. So much went wrong for him in, that, in those games. Like, even the times where he's lost his overlord to the cannon, or he had his hatchery blocked, or there's, you know, the times where he had his, like, pool sniped, den sniped, everything was late. It's just so many things can go wrong for him, and he still finds a way of navigating to really favorable positions it does kind of show his caliber and his experience and someone like him really is a champion level player who's able to keep cool and collected even during the most craziest of times most zerg players would probably fold like a house of cards but players like jadon and hero are able to keep their cool and make it look like a, a zerg favored matchup really heavily yeah that was scary to watch if you're a Protoss player, you're going to be shivering in your boots watching the Zerg swarm like that. Doesn't look very beatable, honestly, but here we are with speed now in the bottom left-hand corner on Retro versus Jadong down here in the bottom right. We'll be going for a 12 hatch. Not the fastest uh, drone scout. He didn't uh, do as quick of a drone scout here as he did versus mine, but he is getting that out across the map uh, i like to do this with my early drone as well just to check the center make sure there's no shenanigans going yeah. down like a two racks in the middle of the map or anything like that retro is a scary map for something like that but it's not going to be a play uh, for the early game, instead, we're going to go into a 1-1-1 here, most likely. Yeah, yeah, it looks with, with one SCV on the gas at that time, it looks like it is going to be a 1-1-1. Uh, throwing on another SCV now. Does get the delay on this uh, drone from having a chance at coming in there. So there's no way that Jadon's going to identify this 1-1-1 for some time, at the very least. But might be able to start to figure that out as the game progresses a little bit here. But I think this might just be a Valkyrie build out from speed, if I'm not mistaken. I have a feeling that he's going to be wanting to use the Valkyries to give him a, a better um, chance at dealing with Jadon's mutilist control and also give him earlier push timings to maybe... Uh, hit a critical timing against Jadon before he's ready with his Lurkers and Defilers. I think this is going to be a... Yeah, it uh, could be a Wraith play. It could be a drop. Okay, Wraith. If you're going to go for the Valkyrie play, I think you have to get the CC down a lot faster. You can't just go yeah, you're right. directly into um, the factory there and just start making vultures and that type of thing and go into valkyrie you need the extra production but here this uh vulture could do a lot of damage we don't have the sunken here oh my god dude he's he's gonna just get smushed he has no idea he's gonna start the sunken now he can pull all the drones to the ramp um and he does have quite a few lings almost gets the surround there but he's got to buy a lot of time here and this is time you know he's not building anything right now he's got quite a bit of money in the bank he's just panicking here trying to get this up and wraiths are being made on the other side of the map so he's gonna be in a lot of trouble when those wraiths get over here Oh, absolutely, saying this is going to be a nightmare. Yeah, I didn't even notice that he wasn't going for building that CC initially. I thought that maybe, like, 
it was just some weird like transition he was doing but yeah just a straight up two port rape i thought maybe it was going to be like a vulture drop into valkyrie or something but yeah just straight up vultures into two port rape it looks like and that's going to be just the ticket that he needs to really get one over on jadong does finally surround the vulture delaying the mining on the behind the minerals there but still one vulture active harassing and being annoying on the periphery and now these raves going to be start to be made and jadong has no idea about these raves for the time being and might take a lot of damage unless he really manages his drones really uh, especially well here which is going to be tough to do i hope he's got burrow he doesn't have burrow here he's going to be in for a tough time seems like maybe not starting to build some uh creep colonies here just to buy some time for these drones uh, before they all start to get picked off two have gone down already a third now gonna fall some mutas are gonna pop out here in a moment but uh, there's still so much time left he's gonna get an overlord here that's gonna supply block jadong i guess he popped out a few mutas here maybe a pair of scourge as well but there's the burrow okay finally he does have that burrow online that is a really big play here for jadong really really important that he got that upgrade yeah, he's going to try and build on some pressure with these Zerglings, but unfortunately with the wall in, not going to be able to do anything with that. And we will see a bit of a transition out from speed, but still the onslaught going on. And even though he has got Burrow, he can be really annoying into stopping these drones from mining for the time being. And uh, Jaron will eventually stabilize them. The, the main factor is that he didn't get the Overlord Snipe before the Spire finished, so he was able to pop out a few critical units in the nick of time there for Jadong. So it has started to stabilize in this game, and with the Borrowed Lings out on the map, we'll give him a lot of scouting as well. Yeah, he's got quite a bit of vision out here. He does have some stranded Overlords way out on the other side of the map that are potential targets here, but... I think that we're going to see speed come in with the overlords or with the uh, wraiths try to start to snipe some overlords because I think he just finished up cloak. So he's going to look for plays into the main. There's nothing in the main. The overlords are gone from the main. He's going to lose so much here. Well, I guess he can just burrow everything. But that's yeah. still a big loss in mining time here. He's not really going to be able to do anything with that main for quite some time. Yeah, all he can do is make an overlord in the main and then run the muters in for just before a time that hatches. That's pretty much all he can do. He's going to unbar and lose a few more drones to these rays. There's a little bit of a misplay there from uh, Jadong, if I have to say. So, yeah, that's a little bit unfortunate. He's gonna get... The only thing that he can say is that he, he forced a lot of energy burn on these rays. So maybe they're really low energy right now. But honestly, I don't think that's a big enough compensation right now. Jadong's going to try and go on the counter offensive and see if he can find some damage here. And he does need to do something in this, at this stage of the game. He's going to jump on top of the bunker right now. Going to kill that immediately. Bunker going to be going down. And Overlord Speed is probably about to finish here. All the Marines die. One Mutalisk is lost. But the uh, Wraiths are trying to come back right now. And they don't have much energy. They can cloak for a moment. Uh, and he's just going to back away. Jaylong pulls back before the Wraiths engage. So even more energy was just burned here. And it's going to be harder and harder for Speed to fight. I think Jaylong has a good opportunity here to maybe take out Speed. His drones are back to mining in the main. He's done enough to uh, push this back and oh the wraiths are just going down on mass now these uh mutas being controlled brilliantly here by jadon getting enough damage there he doesn't have uh overlord speed just yet but the slow overlords are making their way into the main base right now and might be able to to, to gang up here with these mutas and uh, finish off the last few wraiths there's only six remaining but there's very few mutas to fight now yeah, I think Jadong's going to make a few more drones and just get his own economy back up and running after doing a pretty significant dent into speed with that uh, play here. He has reduced the wraith count significantly. He is going to be losing a few of these overlords, though. needs to be careful not to get any more of those snipe for free. As you say, slow overlords are in a short supply at the moment and needs to be careful uh, not losing too many of those. And that's going to be the thing that's really keeping speed in a good position here is the amount of overlords that are going to be sniped for the time being but Jalen did a pretty good job of coming back and killing a few of those paper planes and reducing the count burning as much energy so speed hasn't got as much air dominance as he would like to have in this stage in the game but there will be a few junctions in a moment now that the energy is replenished that he can come back in there and harass Jadon yet again so Jadon could be in a little bit of trouble here if he's not on top of things there's a potential here for a Valkyrie to finally come out as well. We had the Armory finish up just moments ago. 
He's gonna come in with the wraiths first. See if he can do anything. I'm surprised we don't have overlord speed yet. Uh, that can really leave you open to harassment and damage from these wraiths if you just don't have that. Uh, to to cover these other bases, but still more raids popping out here for speed. I'm shocked. Why do we have this uh, armory if we're not going to build uh, any Valkyries or or use it for anything? That's a little bit strange to me. But here we go. I think yeah, I think he was considering doing that, and then he just realized that he couldn't afford making the Valkyrie and the command center and prioritize the command center. We may see a Valkyrie uh, as an afterthought here, but yeah, I think he made a little bit of miscalculation there with his mineral income. That's true. That might be what occurred here. We have those star ports blinking once again, but now the Mutilus count is getting pretty high and Scourge are available in abundance. So Jadong will have the counter uh, play to those uh, Valkyries if it comes to it. Does he have Overlord Speed? Now, finally, he has it. So maybe he can get over here, fight the Wraiths for that third base. But Speed is making his way over there a little bit quicker. He's going to shoot down this Overlord and might go for that base. No, he's turn, turning around here. Doesn't want to take an engagement that he can't win just yet. Yeah, this is scary territory. We have a whole control group of Wraiths here, so they can really start to one-shot Overlords and be super annoying with high micro. Jadong is uh, familiar with this kind of battle, but he has no Overlords here for, to protect these. He needs to be careful. He might just get chased down. He's going to lose so much damage onto those um, Muters already before the Overlords in position. And these Overlords can get killed so quickly, just one-shot by these Wraiths like they're nothing. So Jadong needs to commit a lot more than just one at a time to have any chance at fighting against these Wraiths. And so far, so good for speed. He's done a Great job of maneuvering around, but Jadon really wants to put the hurt onto him, and he gets one snipe on those race, but it, it, right now it's a heavily uh, glass cannon situation. For both. There's the Valkyries that we were talking about, so if he gets up to like, two, yeah, just two Valkyries is already a big number. If he gets up to like three or four Valkyries, this could just be lights out for Jadon, right? The transition is going to be coming here for JD, but maybe it's going to be too late here. The full army of Wraiths is coming forward, and with the Valkyries to support, he's going to slowly poke in here, try to snipe a few of these uh, Scourge, and then engage fully with the Valkyries. Here they are. Three already. Uh, there's just a few too many Scourge here, I think. So Jadong not going to take this fight, but uh, this is still a huge threat. We're going to have... Oh, wait, a queen comes out. Nice. All right. We, yeah, ensnare. Ensnare is the way to go. I, I completely agree with Jadong's choice here. Um, I'm a little bit surprised we didn't see it maybe 30 seconds sooner if he's going to rely so heavily on Muta Scourge. And he's got four Valkyries already. This is going to get crazy, saying. If he gets up to like six or so Valkyries, like he might... He gets plus one on the, the armory as well. Like we could see craziness in this game. I'm a little bit worried for Jadong, but there is a chance with the ensnare that he gets a complete shutdown on speed, gets a great end snare on the Valkyries or Wraiths, and then just flies in with a flock of Val um, Scourge and cleans those up in one fell swoop. That's possible, but at the moment, I'm, I'm favoring speed, actually. I feel, I feel like his army is superior. Yeah, we could also see just everything explode here. Whoa! Valkyries, five of them, uh, just dealing a huge amount of damage. Goes for the ensnare, completely misses. All the mutas are going to go down here. Dude, this is a sick play from speed. He kills everything, and it goes a little bit wrong here for Jadon. What a crazy engagement there at the end. Yeah, I was worried about that happening. Oh my yeah. days, that was brutal to watch, Sam. <laughs> the Mutilus count that he'd been developing that entire game, the tech that he brought out there, just not the right uh, tool that he needed for the job. And five Valkyries, absolute overkill in the skies there. Annihilates that army so, so quickly. We're going to jump into our next game. Speed moving forward here. Up next, Mini versus Speed. Cross map on Troy. This is going to be uh, kind of an insane game if Speed can survive the early game. But I think Mini's going to put a lot of pressure onto him here. Oh, absolutely. That's definitely what's going to happen. And this is Troy. So we, we could see 9 9 gate. You could see anything under the sun here. Probably might, might be a 9 9 gate. And uh, 
would not be surprised to see it. And uh, to be fair, though, Speed is like not the worst player in the early game. Like, wait, isn't he? The, he's the guy that used to have the ID 10 minute flash. Am I, am I right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, honestly, his early game is pretty, pretty strong. I don't, I don't, I don't feel too worried for him compared to like say someone like Mind. But yeah, this is mini after all. And if he does go for a 9 9, or at least like uh, any kind of significant gateway pressure here, we could see fireworks for sure. It's cross map as well. So maybe that'll be a little bit, a little bit of a benefit for speed here. I don't know how that'll play out. The slightly longer rush distances might come into his favor enough to make this threat a little bit less potent, but it's still going to be really significant. It's going to be like a 10, 12 kind of gateway play from mini. So really strong pressure timing, but not super all in either. Like he could do a, a follow up transition going into Dragoons as well after the initial zealot pressure. Yeah, and I'm, I'm frightened for speed here, even though he is that uh, has that moniker 10 minute flash i just i really rate mini in the early game control he's so good with these early units and he's always going to get the damage with the probe he's gonna have the perfect control with the zealots and dragoons that i don't know if speed can keep up with especially on this map when you've got such a tight choke at your entrance to your natural and if you lose control of that area at all you can get locked into a one base game very very quickly yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't even have to kill the Terran with the Zealot pressure. You do have the option of just killing these assimilators and locking him in as another win condition, which just makes it all the more more challenging as a Terran player when dealing with these early aggression builds because there's more variety that can come your way and more options available to the Protoss player to exploit you. So it can be a little bit daunting to have to deal with that. But the cross map will give him a little bit of a breathing room here. A few extra seconds for Marines to pop out and a few more mineral cycles to occur and much less a uh, factor of maybe the factory being delayed too much here. So there is a little bit of life for speed in this early game for the time being. And I think he might be okay if he can get the Zealot blocks on these uh, Zealots uh, significantly, but not doing the greatest of jobs. So it does take two punches from that Zealot already, but does manage to force it away for the time being. If you can keep this hole plugged up, maybe something can be done here, but needs to be careful not to overextend. Vulture is going to pop out here soon. So speed just needs to buy a little bit more time. Some damage has gone down on that assimilator if only one of these assimilators goes down it's going to be so bad uh for yeah. speed so he gets the vulture out here he loses just one scv so far but he's getting some good micro here with the vulture and if he manages to get the marines through this little gap it's not going to go that well he loses one marine but pretty decent job here so far he's going to focus down that last uh, that that one zealot there and as soon as that goes down these four uh, Marines and one Vulture should easily be able to clean it up. And there it is. He does get rid of that. The follow-up Zealots are not going to do nearly as much. And Dragoons, can they deal any damage at all? I think that Speed has done a great job of shutting this down. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. I did kind of expect him to handle it reasonably well, but yeah, he's, he's handled it with quite a lot of finesse here. And uh, with the good patrol micro, going to shave off a lot of hit points from these zealots. And he needs to now get this bunker up on the high ground is the real issue. That's why we see these zealots still committed to the front. Mini just wants to slow down the bunker timing because now these two dragoons are going to start to really go to work and the tank's not going to be coming up for some time because a vulture after um, machine shop here for speed. So now these dragoons can go to work trying to snipe off these marines so they can't just get into the bunker and prevent any further damage here so now the vultures have done a good job of shutting down um, one of the dragoons so it looks like the bunkers actually is going to get up for a moment there i thought maybe he was going to be able to shave off more of those marines and maybe one of the vultures but actually speed doing a really good job with target firing and managed to manage to kill that dragoon just in the nick of time before losing too many units there Wow, I don't know if uh, Mini's going to uh, commit to doing something really desperate here or not, but he is in a rough spot. Speed going to grab his CC now, and he's got mines on high ground, so uh, you really can't break through here. You'll have to take a Nexus as the Protoss player, and the CC is about the same time with Tech coming up as well. Speed is going to be able to do a drop here really quickly and potentially punish Mini, who's just sitting out in front. Uh, looks like he slides by here with a vulture going to force mini out of that front frontal position and you can't take any of the protoss tax here uh as mini right you can't yeah. sit there and just hit the bunker so you're not going to be able to force out repair here and already there's a tank on the way so uh, that's not even going to be a factor right now 
Yeah, honestly, like Mini was really ga uh, had a really big gambit there because of the, the delayed bunker. He was really hoping on some significant damage and maybe killing more of the vultures and getting with a snowball damage. Mike actually loses this probe and does in fact lose that probe to the vultures. A bit of a nightmare situation for Mini to be in. That's really annoying for him, honestly. Like he even had the the idea of escorting the probe, but the timing just wasn't in his favor and just basically guaranteed to lose the probe unless you like notice the vultures in advance. So unfortunately. For him, he's going to be slowed down and even taking this third base on curve. So, with the vulture drop coming in, and he's not got his third base on the way, I'm a little bit worried for Mini. In fact, he's just going to be going for a, a robo after, and I'm going to be trying to take this third base. He's probably abandoned expanding for at least uh, until seven minutes. Yeah, this is really not looking good here. Dragoons out in the front. We do have them moving back towards the main. Has even tipped off. Maybe just the timing here is right for a drop to come in, and he's bringing the Dragoons back into a position that could shut this down. However, uh, how much damage can speed do with the uh, Vulture speed finished in mind? He should be able to get in here and at least kill a few probes. One goes down, two falling already here. There are... Mine's getting thrown down as well, which will make this a lot harder to clean out. Wow, that mine actually went off, but it didn't kill all the probes there. That could have been insane. That mine would have maybe yeah. killed every probe in the main. That one might have been the best mine we've ever seen in KCM if it had. Yeah, you're not wrong saying. Not only that, but even though we didn't kill all the probes, he did force both probe lines to drill around so it did disrupt the mining time a lot of those probes so even though not a lot of probes actually died in that the mining time disruption alone was pretty significant damage there at this junction of the game has got a few uh, dragoons being uh, maneuvered over to this nine o'clock position both to to block any vulture run buys because the assimilators are still alive and also to catch any vulture drop shenanigans that might come down there but yeah, right now Mini's going to be pinned down in these positions while this dropship remains active because he needs to keep all three locations under control. And meanwhile, I imagine speed is going to be um, macroing up back at home, maybe even considering uh, taking the island expansion with a third CC. Oh, dropship is going to drop, kill just one probe and back away. Luckily for speed, uh, luckily for Mini, excuse me, he uh, didn't kill that assimilator before the drop came in because he would have been locked out of the space and not able to clear that vulture. But as it stands, he will get in there, deal with that. He's starting to clear mines in his own main now, moving out on the map. But this is looking really, really bad, really dangerous here for Mini. Can we take another base right now, Speed? Maybe that uh, island uh, might be viable here. Uh, I see something being built in the main base, but I'm not sure what it is. It might be another CC. Oh! No. Ooh. Great That's mine not a CC. He's not making a CC just yet. He's going up to four factories first, but... I uh, imagine that the CC might be a uh, consideration soon. He might, or he could just do a two-base timing. He might, might be, think that he's done enough damage here that he might want to go for a timing and really mm. cripple Mini. But he, yeah, he's going to do a five-factory play. I don't, I don't necessarily disagree with this either. I think this is just, this is fine. Um, it will give Mini a chance at coming back. I think. Mm -hmm. um, but I also feel like this is a strong play here. It, it does give him a lot of flexibility, and he has he can just take this expansion while doing the five factory pressure play. So he's going to have like seven or so tanks roll out here. Okay, six tanks is going to be the rollout timing, and then he's going to rally this with a lot of vultures coming behind us. And he's going to count on the fact that Mini's got all of his goons split up and dealing with his vulture harass. He's not going to be able to mount uh, a formidable enough defense to catch this uh, army coming across the map right now. Yeah, he's going to have to split off some Dragoons to try and fight this, and he won't have his full force together to deal with the tanks. Now, if he loses tanks right now, he could end up throwing this game back into the hands of Mini, but he's backing up in time, it looks like. One Wraith out here in the front is kind of funny addition to this force, but uh, tanks are starting to go down a little bit. We're missing the part of the fight here, and some more harassment going on at the center left as well. Looks like uh, clearing that out. The dropship does go down as well. One tank did fall, but Speed is moving forward here with the vulture rallies coming up. He's going to have an opportunity to kill right now, but there is, of course, uh, the possibility that maybe Mini holds this and... Uh, kills off a bunch of tanks and brings himself back into this game with just some good reaver control. That's a nice shot to start things off. Doesn't get any of those vultures, but also picks up the reaver here before taking any damage of his own. 
Yeah, I mean, he has killed one of the guys at 9 o'clock to lock out any medium-sized units so no vultures or tanks able to get into that 9 o'clock pocket without drop assistance anymore. So instead, we see this uh, pathway down to the rally point with these units setting up to just squeeze many out of the game slowly but surely, if possible. We'll be trying to use this Reaver to get as many uh, pot shots onto these units as he can. Does also lose the Wraith there. Now, now wants to do a little bit of a dive maybe onto these units and see if he can get some splash damage onto these tanks with some Zealots maybe. And uh, does have another good Reaver Scarab going to be killing one of those tanks. But honestly, this is looking pretty dangerous for Mini. Like, Speed's already at his door and there's not a lot for Mini to maneuver out of this position with. He hasn't really got like Zealots he can bomb onto these tanks or anything. And there's plenty of vultures to swallow those up even if he did. So this is looking really worrisome for Mini. I think that Speed actually might have this game. Speed's done a great job of harassment up till this point, and it's paying off dividends now as this push uh, gets up towards his natural. He's completely contained the Protoss here, and he has the opportunity to take uh, additional bases, but he's just forcing his way forward slowly but surely, closing the noose around Mini's neck. Can Mini break free? of this uh, hold here this grip from speed a great first shot there from the reaver hitting a bunch of these zealots or vultures excuse me a lot of them going down the reaver falls here though and there's still plenty of tanks remaining with no zealots in this army to break this and lots of turrets coming up now it's going to be very difficult to break through yeah, and Speed's just expanding to the bottom right while this is going on. So the longer this goes on, it's going to be looking better for him as well. Mini's going to have to do something soon. He has got the shuttle actually going out onto the map here. I think he's trying to unload some units. Yeah, he's trying to like uh, get these Dragoons active out onto the map from these the island expansion at 9. So to get those units active and force some of Speed's units to go to the north to deal with that rather than continuing the pressure at the front here at the rally point. That's not really going to do anything but buy a little bit of time here for him. He might get some of these dragoons sniped off for his efforts as well so i don't know about this I, I really do feel like mini is just moving into a worse and worse game state as the seconds are starting to tick past we do have two shuttles though making their way across the map maybe these can find some critical damage here but i don't know how they're going to be game ending damage he needs to like kill a significant amount of scvs to make this valuable yeah even with killing a bunch of scvs i don't think it's going to be significant enough a 10 kill reaver right. here over at the natural it's going to get some shots onto these scvs but they're just running down uh, over to the bottom right the fresh base down there and the reaver gets killed he's going after the assimilator i don't think he's going to get it though <laughs> Uh, no. Kind of a cheeky maneuver here at the end of this game, but I think Mini is just about out of it. He has uh, his last gateway here in the front getting picked off, and the tanks are climbing up here on the high ground. He will have to abandon the natural, and he's still technically in this game, but hardly has a fighting chance at this point. He's actually going to kill his own assimilator to block uh, speed from getting in here to deal any more damage to his main, but. How is he ever going to win this game from this position? It feels hopeless at this point. Yeah, it really does feel... He needs to, like, do mass storm drops, play, like, refugee Protoss with the um, shuttle setting up island expansions and killing assimilators to set up island expansions, and then maybe do a carrier switch. Like, that's the only thing I can really think that is have any chance at winning in this situation, but he needs good storm drops, crippling the economy of speed while also uh, setting up these own bases and doing a carrier switch eventually. It's just so much to ask for. And he's, I don't think Speed's even going to like let up enough to, enough of a time for him to accomplish those goals. So uh, there is a chance of Mini winning from this position. It's just very difficult, Sam. Yeah, so far behind in terms of the supply right now. Mini has a lot of money to spend, so he's going to start throwing down Nexuses on islands. But Speed could build like eight dropships right now and just start mass dropping every single base. And uh, he might, in fact try to do that here as he's expanding down into the bottom right he's going to be sucking up more and more resources and maxing out here very very soon yeah it's not looking good for um, mini at the moment we do see this frontal assault maybe there's not enough defenses here if he can force the entire retreat of speed from the front or maybe get the snipe on this similar something can happen there is a significant amount of forces here he should at the very least be able to kill this assimilator if he so chooses does try and force away those tanks into the main base but hasn't chosen to kill the assimilator just yet is just trading units as cost efficiently as possible right 
right now, causing as much of a mayhem and forcing a full tactical withdrawal from speed from that front line, uh, relieving some pressure there. But the, the damage has already been done here for Minis, though. So I think this is just kind of like a last hope effort. He needs to kill this assimilator as some compensation, but I think he's left it too long. I don't think he's going to kill it anymore. It's no. So close. What? This is. This is oh ridiculous. I'm so blown away that he, he threw away his one chance at killing that assimilator because he's not going to get that chance again. He needed to kill that assimilator and he didn't. So now I think it's it's curtains for him. Yeah, this is, <laughs> this is so rough. Mini has a third base now, but does he even have the tech coming out here for, for carrier? Or, I mean, is he still just building shuttles and hoping for the best? I think he's going to drop a probe here. Yeah, there's a probe to start a Nexus at least. But a Wraith here is pretty smart. Just chase down the, the dropship and try to pick that off. If he can get the shuttles out of the sky, then, you know, what is, what is Mini really going to do before he has carriers out? He's not going to be able to shut down that Wraith. Yeah, I, I honestly don't think there's anything that can be done anymore. He needed, he invested too much of his army in killing an assimilator that didn't get killed, and he didn't even kill much of the economy of speed as well. So, the carrier switch will have lost all of its potency now. He, he should have switched into doing storm drops or something instead of this kind of like yeah bulldoggy kind of play. I'm, I'm, I think um, his win percentage has kind of gone out the window. I think we're looking at like a one to three percent win chance here for Mini, and that's assuming a lot of blood from speed finally drop ships are being incremented out here for speed and he's gonna shut down the six o'clock most likely although he has the option to drop down here as well or into the main base slow pushing uh, from in, uh, inside the natural and supporting from inside the natural while taking some pot shots here uh, at the third some reavers coming out here to actually clear this and a lot is actually is, is gonna go down uh because the uh, tanks here on the other side of the wall are dealing a lot of damage but you know what he actually clears this that's a little bit surprising that he was able to get through that but he lost the majority of his units he still has four shuttles to work with this is just showing you how difficult it is to do dropship style terran against a uh, Protoss player when they've got Reavers to drop out. It's just such a better unit uh, for the space in the dropship. Um, he's going to come back and drop again, and this Reaver already has a huge amount of kills. He might be able to snipe this drop. He does. So even limiting the dropship potential here even more. Uh, however, bottom center has already been killed. There's, <laughs> there's like a bunch of units down there. I don't even know when they got there, but the Nexus is going to fall for sure. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it's good what Mini's doing, but he, he, he all he's done is really delayed dying. Uh, it looks like he actually might save this Nexus at 6 for the time being. It is dangerously low on HP, though, so that might get sniped in the next few moments of the game. But yeah, he's weathered the storm. He's not necessarily dead, but uh, Speed will just keep applying this pressure until he is dead. He's, he's currently more than double the supply of Mini in this game right now. Has got his 2-1 upgrades as well, so he's still trading reasonably well. He hasn't got his late game upgrades online, even though it's 19 minutes into the game but i imagine that eventually plus three will be on the way for him as well like everything's going to be going in his favor he's going to be even getting up to like five bases by the time he's mined out in his main just now so yeah pretty much everything is fine for speed so as long as he's trading at like a 30 to 40 percent efficiency he's, he's, he's going to absolutely destroy mini in this game mini just hanging in there man kind of hilarious to watch this guy play uh, from such an insane deficit, he is uh, scrappy with the units that he has left. But here comes another drop down here into this base. And every time the trades happen, more probes will die. And the support from over the wall is just going to help out so much. More Reavers pop out and kill a lot of this. He even picks up the Reavers afterwards and is going to save a lot of them. Can he kill the Nexus? Another drop here. A lot more units suddenly appear at this base and it looks like Mini's just gonna lose the Nexus. That's the last base going down. It's gotta be GG here by now. Mini's still hanging in there, but uh, he has no Three right times. to be in this game anymore. <laughs> Three times the supply, Sam. Oh my 60 goodness. 60 to 184. Yeah, this is not looking good. We got a lot of shuttles, but it seems like we got more shuttles than units right now, Sam. What are we doing here? Yeah, I think we've got 
like a 10 supply of shuttles and we've only got 60 supply <laughs> he's flying into the bottom right there's so many turrets here SCVs are going to be pulled, but it doesn't really matter. There's plenty of locations to mine around here, and a counter drop is going to come down. This is like a, a TVT play here. Dropping on top of the drop, it's going to actually clear everything, uh, even though this is full of reavers, and GG is called GHG, in fact. Mini taps yep, out. GP correctly, that game said. Well, that was a match. That was a Troy match for sure. <laughs> that was a match you can only get from that map, but quite a wild one here. Now we're going to go on with Protoss being eliminated first. Speed's going to take either Hero or Queen. Coming up next. Sending out Hero here for the Zerg squad and Speed. Teeing up on Mini that last game is going to be feeling good here. That win uh, has got to be a boost to the confidence right now. I mean, anytime you're able to kind of dunk on a player as strong as Mini, it's uh, a good, very good feeling. Um, usually they'll just tap out a lot quicker on the ladder, but Mini showing a championship level spirit, you know, hanging in there and trying to make it work regardless of being way behind in this game. That's, it's nice to see. Better than tapping out too early and leaving something on the table. Yeah, that is on the semi-island map as well, so there is room to maneuver in those hot spots. It's not like he can just like attack, move into your main base and wipe out your infrastructure. He does have to do a lot of tactical maneuvering with dropships, and a lot of things can go wrong for the Terran in those junctions, so... Yeah, not not the worst not the worst decision to hang in there and see if something can be done. There was a chance that speed, you know, would have blundered a few times and made a few mistakes and could have been caught out by Mini and the, suddenly the tables are a little bit flipped there. So can't really fault him for staying and hanging in as long as he could in those games, especially on that map. And now we get to see Hero play and uh, Hero as a speed. So uh, just a hatchery first coming out from Hero, nothing too crazy. And a very standard Rax timing here from speed. So I think we might have a really good game on our hands so. Yeah, one racks fast expand from speed. He's not going to repeat his game uh, earlier against Jadong where he went for so much tech in the early game this time. Being a little bit more conservative, going to play it out a little bit more normally here with the early expansion coming down pretty darn quick and could opt to put a little bit of pressure onto Hero, but this guy hero so so good at controlling the game uh, with early lings and his control he's just overall uh, micro control is so fantastic with the overlord over the natural i don't think that speed's going to be able to do anything with naked marines this game yeah i don't necessarily think we'll we'll see that um i i have a feeling that because of the spawning positions like you say i think we're gonna have a very nice game on our hands it's possible that speed does try and go for something still uh, regardless of that we'll have to see but uh, i think we might see pretty standard game from both sides and i'm really excited to see where these two line up because i haven't really had the chance to see speed play against many players and uh, how he stacks up against here will be very interesting to me well, looks like a two racks uh, timing going to come out of speed here on the other side. Hero probably going to go for 2.5 hatchery. We didn't see the exact timing on the gas here, so can't be 100% sure, but uh, likely that he has optimized this build for the 2.5 hatchery. It's very strong, very good build right now. I uh, will give Hero a lot of options for how he wants to take down speed in this game and uh, we will have that hatchery coming down here pretty soon. Six more links pop out as the spire starts here. Enough to deal with those naked marines that are pushing out across the map. So you can just see Hero making exactly the right number of units to make sure that no early damage can occur. And Speed just going to turn around knowing that he's being respected here. And his naked marine move out has been uh, countered. He's just going to go back home and hide behind his wall.
I like the optimization of just telling the Marines to stop so that he could focus on sliding his SCV around for longer in the main base. That's like fewer actions rather than like telling them to run back right away, just telling them to stop so they don't advance too far and keep the option to either keep going or retreat back if needed. I think it's a nice little optimization for Terran players moving out. It does see the normal timing here. It's, he's actually moving out like about 10 seconds earlier than usual to try and catch here off guard. It does kind of work a little bit, catches a little bit of damage on those uh, Zerglings. And this is like a very critical timing. He needs to try and force two Sunkens here if he can. Yeah, I think he is going to be able to do that because the Fire Bat negates these uh, Lings pretty darn well. And it can't really engage this too much. And there's only one Sunken Colony here at the front. Two more Fire Bats are coming up. One Sunken Colony does not do well against a, a single medic push like this. He's going to dive on top of it. More Lings are popping out here, but is that really what he needs? Fire Bats are going to be a big part of this push. Oh my goodness. Absolutely wrecked. Wait, what? I guess you should have waited for those extra fire bats. <laughs> that was a ma yeah, but then then the sun can finishes in time and stuff. Mm. So this is like an absolute masterclass in like min max defense there. Like he calculated that he didn't need a second sunken, but needed an evo chamber to block. Like that's crazy from hero that he calculated that he'd be fine with just that defense. Like that's that's some balls, I tell you. Bold plays here from a uh, hero, but. You know, speed losing those early units he's gonna be on the back foot he should have turrets up in time though and he will be chased by these muta so even buying a little extra time here with the uh fire bats running around and he forced you know extra lings as well so the wheelless timing is not going to be as scary here however the turrets are quite late let's see if he can get these up in time just starting now so uh, the ones in the main are certainly a bit behind uh, schedule here and maybe hero can start to pull this area apart more mutas coming out here third base down in the bottom right it's not that 2.5 hatchery that i mentioned earlier instead taking the natural here uh, as his third base and taking it quite quickly he's already getting into that third gas um this is going to be a nice standard play from him from a two uh two hatchery play in the main base and yeah. I'm excited for this one, man. We're going to see Hero play it at that like peak level, that super standard Zerg play where he gets just enough lurkers at each location and manages to take this into an ultraless late game. Yeah, I'm super stoked for how this game is going to transpire, saying I have a feeling that Hero is going to really dominate speed in this game. I'm a little bit concerned. We'll see some Valkyries as an answer to this Mutalist Micro of Hero. He's very good at it. He's a very well-rounded player. He's a very strong macro player, but his, his micro and his Mutalist control is very potent as well. So you have to be really cautious in how you approach someone like this. And if you are on the back foot, you, you better believe that you're going to be taking a significant amount of damage. Wow, I think... Uh... Uh, speed believes he can get in with uh, a tank push here before the defilers are done but heroes just taking such advantage of these marines that are trying to defend the uh, supply depots and there's no turrets in the main what is this we don't even have a second turret here next to the cc and we could easily see uh, speed get dominated right here the valkyrie pops out it gets a good volley but it is going to get tracked down doesn't get the second volley off here and speed is just about out of this one man he's gonna lose the starport here almost definitely as he's trying to turret push towards that more links are gonna come in here more mutas are gonna arrive he's gonna take over the barracks now wow it's an absolute masterclass in target prioritization and mutilus caress as well like the ability to like identify the moment to jump onto the the valkyrie to guarantee a three volley kill is like really exceptional like the way he forced this all to transpire by like when he targeted the control tower and then when he decided to turn around on the valkyrie is really phenomenal stuff from hero just showing his absolute stellar class picking off any valkyrie that can make its way out of that starport then shutting down the production of those valkyries by picking off the low hp control tower now just camping the barracks production forcing a leapfrog of turrets which won't be significant enough in restoring control over these barracks for quite some time has got a tank out but there's no way this tank push is ever going to be successful after taking this amount of critical damage so yeah just an absolute masterclass from here and now the, the lings are going to be the checkmate here because the lings can flush out and start killing some of these uh, pocketed turrets as well while the mutants still camp the barracks over and over again so unfortunately for um, speed i think he's going to have to gg soon yeah he does have the tank it's fighting quite well considering everything that's going on right here he kills all the lings 
A little bit surprised that we didn't see Lings just go after the turrets in the natural at this point, but he really wants the kill immediately, and I think he's going to find it here. Two Scourge right at the perfect time, arrive here at the front line. He's not going to get the connection with the Valkyrie. Great control there from speed, and he is starting to whittle down these Mutas, but the Lings coming in and clearing out the turrets now is probably the killing blow. SCVs are starting to fall. The Vultures popping out here are actually a great addition to uh, kind of shore up the defenses here against the number of Lings that are out, though. It's just not going to be enough. Too many Lings end up getting this around here on one of those vultures and the marines just cannot come out fast enough there's only one barracks left he's building another barracks in the natural but that dies as well and it's just pure ling uh floods here from hero to win this game from this position one fire bat pops but scvs are falling left right and center hero is 10 supply ahead and he's still pushing in right now i don't know if he has a transition on the way but he really doesn't even need one at this point he just needs to keep flooding forward lurker there it is okay wow yeah. even making yeah. lurkers during all this craziness he's been trading the pieces of the board and simplifying his wing condition and now just has his like checkmate move coming in here like he's gonna lose so many scvs to these lurkers there's no way he can fight against these lurkers without tanks as well gg finally called from speed and looks like light is gonna be the final bastion of hope here for terran as he's got both hero to face and now queen in the waiting in the wings here it is hero versus light for set number seven on dark origin couldn't have asked for a better week, Shun. This has been just fantastic. Oh, it's been exceptional, Saiyan. I, I can't complain at all. We've had names we, we don't usually see very much also show up and perform uh, to a higher standard than expected as well. It's been absolute stellar stuff and really in interesting games as a result. And we might see a very, very standard, strong TVZ from these two players here and now. Very fast scout timing, wants to be very cautious about the 8 racks uh, potential on maps like this. So I can't fault him at all. Um, it will be a little bit annoying and harassing this barracks being placed. It's, it's easier if you build the barracks on the high ground, but if you build the barracks on the low ground, the drone actually gets a harass value as well for its early, comp its early timing. So a little bit annoying here for Light to deal with. Yeah, this is great control. Not easy to do at all to get the drone to fire without the SUV getting to attack back and he's brought it to a pretty reasonable level he's gonna pull away here while the drone gets uh, super super low but um just like you were saying he uh, forces an SCV off the line to just chase and uh, to try and fight this drone and repair the SCV. This is a lot of lost mining time that's uh, giving him a lot of compensation for sending such an early drone across the map and giving him the confirmation really early on too that it's no sort of harassment coming. He will be able to go straight on in to his 12 hatch play. Oh, look at this micro as well. Almost getting the SCV kill. Would have been beautiful if he could secure that. Does seem to go for it. He's oh! 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 I was just thinking, if he's not careful though, he can still turn around and kill the drone. He did just that. Beautiful play from Light. Like, uh, uh, this is crazy. Like, I don't understand how how we can see such interesting games from these two players at like two, three minutes into the game. We're already seeing some crazy fireworks. Uh, I'm excited for what times may bring. It's light is the kind of player as well. He's very um, light on his, the amount of SCVs, pun intended, and how he makes. He does like to cut SCV production very early on and just hover around 38, 40 SCVs and really churn out his production early oh. game. So it might be a lot of pressure here and still getting drone kill damage this is beautiful play from from like he knows hero inside and out and he knows he can get away with this kind of cheeky punish play because hero will skimp out if given the opportunity yeah he did skimp pretty hard here not building any quick lings he does have some on the field now to deal with any more nick and marine pushes but look at what light is doing he's putting his marines just outside the vision range of the overlord over there in the natural to make it seem like he's pushing across to try and force out additional lings from hero and after losing one initial drone you gotta be feeling like uh maybe just building uh, overbuilding lings here but hero doesn't seem to be doing that he's not afraid here he's not taking the bait He's just building drones and trying to get in, back into a good macro position. Throwing down the spire now. 
want to see if he's going to come in. He's going to realize that his gambit, his little uh, mind game here was not successful against Hero. And he might actually move across the map now with five uh, Marines to try and put on that pressure once again. He's got five here. Let's see if he moves forward. Yeah, yeah, he has a tiny window where he can move out just a little bit here, but I don't, I don't actually think he'll necessarily go for it. Um, he might just be a little bit more overly cautious for the time being. He can't actually get in here deep with this SCV as well, so he doesn't actually know how many links have been made. Hero could be super smart and hiding some additional links for all he knows as well. So mm. we're, we're there on the side of caution uh, most of the time. Maybe waiting for six Marines to move out. Oh, has the medic, medic yeah. <laughs> Could move out here. Two creep colonies already forced. We should have a scan finished and ready to go here pretty soon. So as soon as he sees that double sunken colony, he's going to realize that the respect is already there. There's the scan. As you see the sunkens, I don't think he saw that. But he does see the high ground the hatchery. He's moving across the map right now. If he saw those, I think he just sits back at home and goes into the next stage of the game yeah no you're absolutely right saying he for as far as he knows um he could have skimped out on both sunken colonies and he's just gonna like you know double check that and make sure that is the case that he has got sunken because if he doesn't he can punish right here right now sees the sunken colonies but well, he sees the far the creepers pushed down and that's all he needs to know to know they're already finished you know what i mean he doesn't even actually need to see the sunken colonies to know that they're probably there so i want to just make sure that hero is being honest and hasn't been super greedy and not making those at all so now which will be returning to his base to defend against the mutilisk timing of hero but hero is the kind of guy where he won't necessarily always commit to mutas he'll sometimes make just five or so then he'll power drone and then make more mutas or something so you never know quite how many mutas he's going to commit to initially so it's really hard to make the perfect amount of turrets and defenses to deal with someone like hero yeah third base is going to start here very soon as the mutas start to be produced 700 gas still in the bank right now so he is banking quite a lot of that gas not pouring it into mutas just yet uh, and likely for a very quick transition here like you were saying before but i don't know if that's going to work well against light who is building into a huge barracks count he's got four racks pumping away here you need a lot of muta ling to actually deal with the amount of pressure that's going to be coming across the map here especially if you want to hold on to a third base right now yeah you're absolutely right and likes the kind of guy where he likes to cut his cvs and go crazy on his production early so hero needs to be really cautious in how he navigates this he could just see this third base be cancelled or have to, yeah he might just have to give up this third it's possible He's really looking that way. He does cancel and backs off. Uh, drone might head down to like the bottom left or something. Try to find a spot where it's not going to be uh, harassed. Where it's not going to be picked off here right away. But this is a big win for Light. Uh, already shutting down that third. And just slowing down everything for Hero. Making his uh, gambit there. Not building a lot of early mutas. Seem a little bit wasteful. And uh, ill informed. And now... I mean, just sitting out here with the plus one done and four racks pumping. Light is looking really, really good. Yeah, um, Hero needs to get shaving on this um, Marine group right here right now and really start to punish this small bio ball. Uh, force out stims, drain the energy of the medics and get it to a situation where he can just trade out weakened muters and gobble it up as cost efficiently as possible. If he does do that very efficiently, he'll be in an okay spot. Like doesn't want to like let that happen for free, so he's going to be really on top of his control and deny that from happening as long as possible. If he can get these two armies joined together, that's a much more solid position for Light. But Hero should do everything in his power not to let these two armies join right now. I'm a little bit surprised that he's so slow in coming down here. He looks like he's waiting for these lings, and he's hoping that he's going to get it just before the Marines can join up, and he is going to get that play set up beautifully timed from Hero, actually. I shouldn't have doubted him saying that he's going to be cleaning up very cost efficiently, losing hardly anything, now getting the third base online, and it does kind of reset the power a lot even though we did have that third base delayed for so long killing that bio ball that efficiently does kind of tip the favor a little bit back into hero's court making it work there even with slow lings you don't often see a play like that end up working um but the production is kind of insane on those three hatches in the main base he's able to pump out enough uh, middle lane there to just make it happen and now the marines coming across the map is he gonna dive on this he's got quite a few links but again he doesn't have speed so he's gonna wait try to pick away at the edges of this uh, marine medic force lower it down a little bit farther a little bit more in range of what he can handle 
Yeah, I mean, so far, so good. I mean, the supply is actually looking pretty uh, hero-sided as well. Uh, he picked up one medic there. Reducing the medic count is pretty pretty significant. When you've got this many marines fielded, it makes it much harder to, to manage your stims. If you stim too much, you can be just in a world of hurt because eventually the medics get drained of their energy so much that they can no longer replenish the hit points while they're fighting the mewers and you just get overrun so quickly. So he needs to be extremely careful with how he engages his mewers. This is the kind of thing I'm talking about. He's baiting out stims just by running into the periphery and then hovering around for 10 seconds he's wasting so much energy on these medics lurker upgrade to be finishing here soon hero going to be transitioning into that defiler it's on the way uh, but he's built a lot of mutas here dude i'm a little bit uh, worried about whether or not he can make good use of these before the vessels come out and start to irradiate everything i think we need to dive on the the, the marine group here pretty soon and make these worth it make this trade actually work for himself if he had a four scourge right now this could actually go really really uh hero favorite if he just dives on top of this whole marine force and uh, picks off both of those science facility or science vessels that would be key here to this next defense but light is going to get around to that left hand side i think he has energy for uh, radiates and if you try to run in and fight with uh, big clumps of mutas against these marines and irradiates come down you're going to get absolutely smashed so he put, throws down two irradiates here there's two uh, lurkers going to be a left he is going to stim up here at, can he actually break down this ramp right now he won't have that uh irradiate here for the mutas mutas coming in and helping out he targets down both the lurkers two more lurkers three more lurkers about to spawn he does pop those lurkers here at the last moment he's trying to target them down he targets the lurkers here very very nicely and it's just pure ling muta remaining two more lurkers are going to come forward maybe he can still hold this that's not many marines on the left hand side hero is doing it right now he's hanging in there some scourge pop maybe he can dive on top of these science vessels no i thought those mutas were gonna clear everything but yeah. I, it looks like hero did too he's not gonna finish off the marines they stand strong and they will gun down the last lurker here the vessel survive as well dude that was really really close hero making a great game out of it despite being in yeah. a rough spot yeah, this is why like style works so well. He cuts SCVs to have just that little extra production. So you think you might hold, but he's got just that extra critical mass to overcome you in the numbers game, and he breaks through and does critical damage. And that's unfortunate there for Hero. He had almost enough mutas to clear up the left hand flank, but if he had like one more muta left alive, he would have been able to gun down the Marines one at a time. But because there was just barely not enough muas, the medics were just topping up the Marines enough to keep them up in the fight and eventually bled off all the mutas. So really unfortunate there from Hero. Nearly did a hero hold, pun intended, but yeah, now getting the defilers irradiated at the door of his base, not the ideal situation to be in. Has got some lurkers set up here not to just die right off the bat, but I mean, he has two sunkens in the back pocket. He's gonna have to, yeah, he's just gonna GG out. It's not really anything to be done here, unfortunately. It's gonna be a light versus queen showdown in the final, Sam. Incredible game there, light pushing hero to the limit, and he breaks under the pressure, but and honestly, I'm so impressed by Hero, the way that he was able to nearly bring that one back. The engagements with the Mutaling was almost perfect. And we're going to jump into our last game here. Light versus Queen. Should be a banger. Let's go. The final match. Queen. Here versus Light in the top left-hand corner. Are we back on the same map? Yeah. On Dark Origin again? Really? That's surprising. Yeah, I wasn't expecting yeah, we got, that. We got the same matchup and flipped spawns, so Zerg in the bottom right this time. So let's see if that will change anything. Do we have the option of boosting these these minerals now with the patches on the right? Terran Khan. <laughs> minor, very minor differences, but might make a slight slight change here. I don't know. Maybe ah, okay. Twelve hatch here from Queen. Yeah. Gonna go for the same build, and Light appears like he's gonna throw down a, a Rax here on low ground too. Or is he gonna go for CC first? 
Oh. Yeah. CC first. And there's no drone scale. There's no drone scale. This is crazy what we're seeing here. We're seeing like a blind uh, uh, hatchery not, not respecting the eight racks at all. No. And now we see a, a CC first with no drone scale as a response. So this is this is wild. That's crazy. You know, this is something that uh, Flash has been using on the ladder quite a bit, the CC first versus Zerg. And getting away with it, he was able to go CC first into Mech with two armories versus Jadong and just smack him down uh, in one cast that I did earlier this week. But we'll see what the follow-up is here from Light. You can basically do anything with CC first and it's going to be strong. Yeah, it's just a, you can do everything normally, just with a much stronger relativistic timing, and nothing the Zerg can really do can really catch up if if they don't scout it early. Mm -hmm. If he did send the drone scout right away, then he can like you know bully the SCP boarding the CC, be super annoying with the drone scout, and really actually make it harder for Light to navigate the CC first timing. But because he did a blind net hatchery build, there's no drone scout, there's no nothing, so. Unfortunately, like Light's just gonna catch a, a, a little uh, build order win against uh, Queen in the early game. Yeah, and he's gonna go directly into two racks production, and he'll likely just have you know, a more robust uh, two racks timing here with way more SCVs and way more production, way more uh, oomph behind that early game aggression in Queen. He's gonna have to hold that. He's gonna have to find a way back into this one. Uh, from kind of a steep deficit here. I know it doesn't seem like uh, it's it's really a tough spot here for Queen. He hasn't really been harassed or anything at this point, but the CC first, it cannot be underestimated, man. It's so strong. Yeah. Oh, it's so strong. It's really frustrating to fight against a Zerg. There's nothing you can really do about it, and you, no matter what what they do, they'll always be a little bit stronger than you. So even if they do the exact same standard build as they would usually, and you do the same standard build as you would usually, they're still just stacked so heavily against you. It just seems insurmountable at certain junctions of the game. And if you do some sort of cheese against it as well, they're just going to have so much more stuff than you would yeah. ever expect. It's it's no easy answer here for Queen, but um, I expect something like a, a Hydralis Defiler play, maybe like a light Mutalisk Caress into Hydra Defiler, something like that. Um, that's a, a play that can kind of tip the odds back in your favor rather than trying to get across here and just fight with Mutas like you usually would. Going for an early hatchery like this and going directly into Hydralis Defiler can give you the the favorable trading potential that can maybe you know, undo the uh, difficulty or the at least balance out the equation here when it comes to fighting against uh, yeah. CC first. Yeah, and even with the CC first, you're able to do a, a, a pretty standard move out timing. Like he's got the the usual like f you know four minute fifty Marines and medics ready to put on the pressure, and he's got a superior economy behind it. Everything mm -hmm. is just so much more potent when you do this build order. If you can get away with it, and Queen just, you know, unfortunately got he got his bluff called early game, and uh, he tried to be a little bit greedy himself and not drone scouting and assuming there'd be no eight racks or, or CC first, and, and now he's paying the price for it, and it's going to be a pretty hefty tax he's going to have to pay as well, unless he can get away with this this third base going up uncontested and get all the way into the filers or anything too significant happening. Maybe you could say he's going to be okay, but that's a big ask, saying. I mean, the mid game is going to be really rough for him. It's going to be tough here, but Queen has that early third base. It hasn't been scouted, so he kind of got away with a little bit here, right? Like, Light, if he had known about that, he could have easily pushed out with the Marines and Medics that he had at his disposal and uh, shoved over to that center right, killed that uh, hatchery for free. But he just didn't have the information available on the map. He didn't have an SCV out to scout. He didn't get the scan over there or anything to find out that that's uh, present. And Queen is skimping here a bit on M Mutas. He's trying to force out the Sims here while currently transitioning and getting that third gas online as quickly as possible. Yeah, I mean... 
you, yeah, to be honest with you, like, this might be okay for Queen. Because this base is going on contest, he's going to go into three gases really quickly, and you'll have some some potency in his own build order to fight against this from Light. It's probably one of the better scenarios he could have hoped for. Light was just trying to bank on the fact that he's got his build order advantage, and that's all he needs to secure a win here. And he's being very conservative as a result to make sure there's no way that he can get caught with his pants down and, like, have his bio ball deleted for free or something. So, yeah, because he's been so conservative, he might start to get a little bit of that advantage negated, but the den is only just now going down. So it, it might be, there's a big strong window here for Light to push out onto the map in this next minute or two to catch him before that critical lurker timing. So he's now the woods just yet, and this is going to be a four-ax production play. So he is going to have, a, he's going to have enough bioforce to put a, a significant pressure onto Queen in the next minute here, and maybe even just kill him straight up. Queen having the center right base uh, as his third might prove problematic, but it might also be a, a decent spot to defend against the uh, bio forces here from that high ground. It's going to be hard to to shove up. It is a very wide ramp going up uh, onto that third base, but going up a hill against lurkers anytime is not. It's just not great. It's not not easy at all. Marine's going to come out here, try to get on the map. But really good trading from Queen, honestly. Every time diving in, he's getting a bunch of kills on these Marines and yeah. shutting down this count pretty significantly. He's done a really good job lowering that medic energy, and now he's capitalizing on it pretty well. Honestly, really beautiful stuff. The light was also trying to be quite um, ingenious in how he was trying to maneuver his marine groups around to zone out the muters and buy time to cross the bridge of the other group and then try and use the group that had uh, positioned themselves on the other side of the bridge to support the bio coming over the other side. But Queen outmaneuvered him at every junction there. Like, he kept, like, flying around and uh, exploiting the marines at different zones and really is punishing light every time he comes out to the map. And here's the, here's the money right now. This is where uh, Queen's at his weakest. He's got lurkers on the way, but it's a big window where they're not ready. And he's going to try and lay siege to this base if he gets a tiny window. But so far, the Mutus Karask has been uh, significant enough that Light's being really tentative and very cautious in how he's going about this. So he might have bought just barely enough time to hang on here, so. Yeah, three sunken colonies on the high ground. Light going to pull the trigger here, but where are the Mutas? If the Mutas were on top of this already, uh, would have been shot down very hard, but the Lurker gets targeted. Great scan there. Great move by Light getting on top of this base, but the Mutalists are actually clearing out a lot. A Lurker here going to spawn uh, in the midst of all this, and he doesn't have scan. No scan available, so this Lurker is going to help out a lot right here, landing on some spines from that low ground, and the Mutalists will clear out everything. Barely hanging on here as the medics go down. That is a huge loss wow. for Light. Totally reset his bio count, but he is five racks, so he can remake that really, really quick. Yeah. Does the Defiler mount come down? Yes, it does. So, I mean, we do have a transition point here for Queen. He should have more Lurkers in position by the time Light push out, pushes out again. I mean, I'm kind of speechless. I, I thought for sure he would have at least a scan, like, able to deal with that Lurker. But no, I guess either he made a miscalculation or he just assumed he'd get a gun down the Lurker before he could borrow. But yeah, like, that one Lurker was hero there, for sure. Like, that could have been game-ending damage if he lost more drones or the hatchery or more units. So the fact that that didn't transpire, Queen's actually looking pretty strong in this this game now, and the, the vessel timing is like going to be slow enough that I think I think Queen's still going to be okay. I think like there's still there's still a window for him to die in the next minute or two. But I think feel like he's weathered enough of the storm that he should have enough resources available to not just straight up die. I think that was a hurricane, man. That was not just a storm. <laughs> Light was yeah, pushing was. in like that was scary, man. <laughs> One misstep and Queen would have been dead. He didn't have right. the Mutas right on top of that as it was coming in, so I thought he was actually going to get broken. But he did manage to pull everything together at the last second there. Um, now Light is pushing out. He's still in a very good spot with uh, the vessel starting to crank. He will be able to uh, irradiate everything, but Queen with the Hydralist Defiler play, if it's as good as I expect, he should be able to take reasonable trades against this and potentially, you know, take this into a late game uh, situation, drag light into deep water, and maybe 
take a fourth base, you know, get into a reasonable spot where he can uh, take this in a long game. But Light is just going to have some moments here where he could break into I any of these positions and he's just uh, edging to do so. He's so ready to jump on anything, any mistakes here from Queen. And he's going to come around to the bottom side of this third base. This is the scary point right here for Queen. He doesn't have... Uh, positions everywhere. To, uh, he's got too many different positions to deal with right here. Uh, coming in, running in against these lurkers. The Marines are going to die en masse, but more um, lurkers are going to come forward to deal with that. He tries to get the vessel kill, not able to get it, but pressure can come from both sides now, and there's not enough lurkers to cover both angles here on that third base. Yeah, it's the difference between great and good Terran players saying is that they're so good at the great Terran players are so good at exploiting any timing weakness that you have as a Zerg create the weakness themselves and light will do just that and try and maneuver around and exploit any tiny pocket of opportunity that's given to him he's trying to swing around to this right hand side again he knows the resources available to queen are limited at this point in the game so there is a window here to really punish queen for the next minute or so if he's not careful he doesn't have enough lurkers on this right hand flank here defending this position he's got like a pocket of like three lurkers stacked up actually be really difficult for him to come in there and defeat delete all those lurkers now finally the swarms here so unable to get through these these trenches and we'll be forced into a hot retreat and we need to dropship play into the main base but there is Mutalisk there just to dive on top of that Queen's completely shut down this gambit of Light Light was hoping this was the play that he was really hoping for he wanted to distract Light at the third base sorry distract Queen at the third base for long enough for these dropships to get in and do the critical damage into the main base but Queen was on top of that with his Mutalisk force and then able to completely shut that down so yeah it's just kind of really hard to tell who's actually winning this game right now saying I would say it's actually quite Queen favorite but right now, Light does have um, his third base on the way right now, but there is Ultralisk Cabin being made. Queen will be taking his fourth base, trying to get into fourth gas. Plague's already done. So I think right now, this is definitely Queen favored in terms of the utility that's available to him. So Really sneaky stuff there for Queen, having a bunch of lurkers underneath the, the gas guys here. We rarely ever see a play like that, but he had them just actually above the gas guys, but underneath the visual part of the gas so that you could barely see the little lurker potholes above that now he's going to come in here with a dark swarm can he get some of these vessels he doesn't manage to pick any of those off but he gets a reasonable play though light will probably shut down the space he does force the cancel we'll be able to get in here and shut this down for now at least yeah, I mean, he has got this third base up and running, so he's not out of this game by any stretch. And slowing down this fourth base is going to be critical for him as well. If Zerg gets four gases underway, 1,200 gas a minute is just too much to allow them to have with Ultra Cavern on, uh, already finished up. So right now, though, Light is in a world of hurt. He's he's gambling so much on this map control right now he needs to constantly be hunting down these defilers non-stop while trying to get his own infrastructure online he's getting a fourth base going online now that's nine o'clock right now he needs to really keep the pressure on keep the siege going and just do not let up on the zerg for any moment and then maybe he'll have a strong chance at crushing this game still he's got a lot of army right now and battle cruisers on the way as well so if he can just keep the pressure on for long enough eventually he will wear out queen and queen will make a a mistake at one of these bases and eventually light will break through but he's keep the siege online for like a whole minute or two minutes just non-stop action uh, the lurk are uh, the uh, mutas there a lot of them getting lost here by um queen as the radiates come down not able to control that with all the chaos going on on the map he has a nicely positioned spore up there in the high ground i really like the spot that he throws that down it's making it very hard for radiates to come down uh, and deal with uh, lurkers on that high ground waddling's coming in here one defiler gonna be helping out with the defense right now dark swarm on that uh bridge there but Light just backs up and there's no third or no fourth base here just yet for Queen. He's got a huge bank of minerals, but his gas is very low. I think he just started a bunch of ultras, but how many can he really afford here at this point? Uh, with this little amount of gas, I don't think it's going to be too many. And Light is going to be putting out those battle cruisers, as you said. Plus, he's got a ton of vessels here now. Just continuously irradiate everything. Nice irradiate there on the Scourge. That's going to be annoying. He does manage to pull out the irradiated Scourge, though that is not easy. He gets rid of that and keeps the rest of the Scourge alive, which is kind of critical because he needs Scourge to limit the amount of uh, vessels here soon. He has to start picking some of these off. Otherwise, all the ultras that were just uh, made up 
uh, or were built out here by Queen are going to end up going down. He takes two more big irradiates here on these ultras, but a great plague on a lot of this stuff. So many of these units down here are actually plagued right now, and oh my goodness, all the vessels are plagued as well. That was some amazing plague play from Queen, and he's actually moving over here towards the fourth. Can he get a, a defiler down here? I think he can, because you just can't push forward these uh, vessels right now. Oh, and the one Muta! The one Muta killing all the vessels is so big! He gets in, he kills the vessels, he brings forward the defiler, he gets on top of the... Uh, oh, he kills that one Marine before he can get inside the bunker as well. These Ultras are going to get on top of the 4th and start to kill all the SCVs here. And the Defiler is going to make that play uh, kind of unstoppable. He will have to lift up that CC and bail out. But at the same time, he's going for the 4th base. Does Queen have what it takes to stop this? Another Plague goes down. One more Ultralisk here in the fight. Some Lings every are <laughs> in there as well. A few more Ultras pop out. Lings are coming to the rescue here. He will be able to save the 4th base. Dude, he's doing it. Queen is doing it right now. Yeah, he's doing it. Battle Cruiser's operational, but it might be too little too late. It looks like the matriarchy is reigning supreme right now. This is like craziness what we're seeing right now. And the, the onslaught is continuing. Even with these two two ultras and dark swarm up here, make it very annoying to deal with. Like you're barely damaging these ultra discs with the fire bats underneath that swarm. So really frustrating. He's gonna be getting the kill on this Nidus to shut down some of the unit flow here and be a little bit annoying. If you can start delaying the gas gas mining on some of these expansions, that's gonna be critical but he's not able to do that for some time and now the fourth gas is online for queen so we have 1200 gas a minute coming in. a lot more scourge can be made a lot more ultras can be made defilers whatever he needs to get the job done light is absolutely full on desperation mode right now trying to both survive and cripple queen's gas income at the same time it's a very difficult thing to balance right now i don't think he's got the tools needed to keep all the plates spinning here so i think he's forced or trying to gun down as many gas drones as he can uh, but the scourge are going to come through through here in a moment and finish this off and he will get back on four gases it's just a small delay but it might be significant here as the forces push forward for light he's gonna move towards this uh fourth base that is mining gas see if he can break this before uh queen gets back online fully here with four gases uh, the natural does manage to get cleared out here he, he finishes off those battle cruises and he will get back to gas mining in a moment but this is, this is some good play from Light to keep this game scrappy as uh, Queen is just getting everything online and, you know, looking very scary. He does manage to shut that gas down just for a moment. Does get his fourth ga uh, base back online as well. So he's starting to stabilize here. Yeah, it was really impressive how Queen managed to deal with those battle cruisers efficiently. Like, they were on hold position to shoot the gas and the drones, but he plagued the BCs again out of range um, for their shots. So they, they were then targeted onto the Defiler and not killing off his own gas so he hasn't even got to replace building the gas he can just go straight back to mining that gas and use oh. less of uh Look at these beautiful plagues. Everything's going so well for Queen. I'm really impressed by his ability to not only weather the storm, but create his own tsunami of threat that's going to be smashing out into uh, Light's forces soon. There's so many Ultras and Lings that are going to be able to be made now. Now that he's got these four gases stabilized, it's going to be a really brutal for Light in the coming phase of the game soon. Yeah, Light is losing vessels right now as well and eating plagues galore. Can he break through any of these positions? It feels like he has to go for the fourth yeah. or the natural here because the third is high ground with a lot of defenses a lot of sunken colonies up there spores as well four three spores on that high ground by the way that's kind of crazy hardly ever see a play like that but queen making a good choice here he is going to be able to defend against uh, the uh, vessels and a potential battle cruiser attacks into that location another irradiate goes down he's constantly picking off the uh, defilers here every time they are coming out but he's at the same time eating more plagues taking a lot of damage on this marine medic force it's still growing up to four, 144 supply but queen is taking more bases man he is getting into a big count of ultra as well and pretty soon he's going to be able to take map control back from light 
Yeah, one thing that's going for Light right now is he's got these plus three weapons done on the Marines and the plus five armor's not yet finished on the Ultras. So Queen will be sitting a little bit more passively until he gets his upgrades caught back up again. But that will be happening in a few moments. He'll have the speed upgrade on the Ultras and he'll have the plus five uh, armor finishing up soon. And he's going to be sitting pretty. But for the time being, Light will have a, a moment of respite to build up a bit, pretty big force to try and combat this. So the, the, I think there's a, a tiny chance here for Light because there, there might not be a critical swell that um, Queen needs to really bowl him over by the time that the armor grade comes online. So I think think there's a window here for light, but it's going to be really tough soon. Oh, another great plague here. So powerful, these plagues. Every time he hits these vessels and follows up with some kills, it's just so much value. Um, which is exactly what Light is trying to get here. He's trying to get value out of these vessels by irradiating all the gas units, but every time he eats these plague and loses the vessels, it's just such a, a commitment that ends up getting lost. Such a, a huge uh, bank of gas that gets lost every single time. And now, Lings are pushing out in towards the middle. He's coming in from multiple angles, trying to get additional plagues down, throwing down dark swarms in key positions. Five armor is finally done. Ultras, are they ready to take this big force? Because Light is pushing in. He's going to go for it here. Sunken Colony is ready. Ultras, where are they? Here they come. Lots of Ultras coming down to meet this. I think he's got enough to take on this force. Yeah, I think he's going to gobble up those Terra Marines and uh, just, just consume their biomass. Uh, with, even though it's not got that delicious chili sauce on it, it's still going to taste nice enough for these Zerg forces. And now this, the remaining of force getting pincered from both sides. It's looking like it's going to be a queen victory here. So I don't think Light has done enough damage to him. And now he's going to be feeling a lot of pressure from Queen because he can now field fully upgraded Ultralisks out onto the map freely and start to set up more Nidus canals around the map to kind of spread out wherever he needs to and attack from whatever vector that he needs to to get the better um, uh, trade in, in, in the grand scheme of things. Light's trying to just like claw his way to the corner of the map and try and body block his way into some kind of favorable trade, but I don't think that's even going to be successful and would just set him up for possible plagues as well in the future. So he needs to be uh, careful in how he uses what tiny forces he's got remaining, but I don't think it's going to be a significant enough of force to defend his say, and I think, I think Queen's done it at this point. Yeah, Queen's placed Light in check here by dropping the Dark Swarms on that high ground. The fourth base will have to be lifted here once again, and Light is just about out of minerals at his natural, so he needs this base desperately. He's only going to be on one base mining here. Ooh! The uh, spore colonies here just wrecking a lot of these vessels, but this small army may be able to make its way in here and kill the Nidus before any uh, additional forces come out. He does get the Nidus. He will shut down the base, but it's still, I think, reasonable position here for Queen. He should have at least two gases mining uh, out of the four that he has remaining, and he's mining quite a bit of minerals still. It's not like he's uh, going to mine out very quickly here with the amount of drones that he's got. This is TVZ after all. Yeah, you, you don't have that high drone saturation, so he's going to be mining from his main and natural a lot longer than Light was anyway. And the fact that Light is getting this expansion shut down over and over again, it's hard for him to get the minerals that he needs to keep churning out this infrastructure, these units from his production. Like, he, he's, he's currently ahead of supply and he's doing okay, but he's not got much mineral income right now, and he might not be able to deal with these forces constantly harassing his mining operations at the moment. He has shut down Zerg from growing much larger, which is great, but he's only mining on, like, one base at the moment yeah mining on one base here queen's got quite a significant bank of minerals but not much gas so mass fire bat's gonna be really really strong against what uh, queen can feel at this point he needs desperately another base so uh working on shutting down that fourth and getting a fifth of his own online here is gonna be key has a defiler has uh some links here over at the towards the top right should be able to get them up to that top right to maybe get this base online but uh, Light is going to eventually get out of this position. He's kind of in a hold right now, uh, but he managed to get out of that check spot, that difficult uh, situation with the fourth base, and now has it landed. I, I think he's looking quite good, man. Um, this is a lot of minerals, but just pure Ling is not going to do too well for Queen right now. He's going to need 
uh, to play very, very scrappy and conservative with his ultras to try and get that uh, level of ultralisk, uh, that the critical mass of ultralisk up again. He does get a Dark Storm over here at the fourth and a Plague as well. This is a pretty good move. Uh, he will force back the Marine and Medic. They were actually headed over the top right and could have denied the base, but they turn around here to deal with this attack. And this is the opportunity that Queen really needed here to get this base online once again he's got a nidus up there this is really good for queen can he uh, stop the counter attack and get this fourth base online we're about to find out yeah i mean both players are trying to keep all the plates spinning right now a lot of them are crashing down and just like cracking under the pressure but um, the majority of the plates are still spinning for both players and it's kind of interesting to see how light's done a, a pretty good job of having enough critical mass of uh, bioforce out on the map to really like keep the threat of the ultras at bay for the time being but now now finally this base has sprouted up again in the top right nidus canal is finished gas is back online so this is the, the the key thing that queen needed to finish out this game which is that little bit of extra drips of drops of gas to come through so we can field more gas units he's been so reliant on cracklings and plagues and swarms and just a handful of ultras for the time being so now he finally gets a little bit of extra gas to start to cook with and it's looking like it is going to be a queen victory but so far light has got a significant force fielded so maybe like can still make something work here Ooh, d matrix on some fire bats here and the oh my god the lings just run in and die that's not a good look for queen he's got a few more ultras popping out here but he needs a defiler uh, to maybe hold this attack into the natural he was so concerned about getting the base in the top left but his natural is starting to get broken here. A lot of lings coming out, but it's not really what you need against such a strong force of bio. It's going to be hard to clear that out. Dark Swarm comes down, and that's going to be what he needs to actually take this fight reasonably well. Vessels are going to be going down en masse right here. He's going to get all of them. Wow, all the vessels go down here, aside from about two, which are kind of spread out around the map. The Nidus goes down. Is there anything over here? No! Oh, there's nothing oh my god that goes down at the the 11th hour here looks like he's gonna lose the fourth base again this is absolutely crazy back and forth we're seeing like both players are doing a great job of like not only keeping their plates spinning but like trying to like kick over the other pep the other players plates so it's kind of like back and forth like relativistic speaking it's been pretty even trades on both sides but queen is slightly getting the better of it i would say like even though he's got this fourth gas shut down yet again like he is forced to lift off of both of those expansions now he's not mining at all is light whereas still we see a trickle of income coming from queen on these two bases that aren't quite dried up yet so yeah so far this is queen favored if light can stabilize get these two bases back to mining and deny the base going up for queen then we could see a light victory here you're totally right. I mean, there's so much minerals that were in the bank for for Queen. He's got like 1,700 minerals in the bank a moment ago. A lot of that got spent, but it's opposite for, uh, for, for Light here, who has tons of gas, but no minerals. And with just no minerals, not able to make uh, too many units here for the Terran. And oh man, losing even more vessels right now. That's really all he has here is just a few vessels. The ultras are going to get in the way, block the marines from running up the high ground. He is getting in here towards this natural. I think the queen just barely might have done it. It's getting so close, though. Some of these ultras are going to go down. Yeah, the radiates are helping out. The battle cruiser is as well. 15 kills on that, but might just barely not be enough. Another irradiate. That's great. Irradiate. They're getting rid of this defiler before it can make it into position. To throw down a dark storm in, in a reasonable spot here and firebats will clear everything he gets the base online again this is just insanity <laughs> yeah i mean the main the main threat is that we don't have this base mining down oh, here no. as long as he can stop light from mining there we're, we're, we're sitting pretty as queen light knows that he needs to invest every resource available to him in securing that he's gonna get these battle cruisers caught for free as well unfortunately baited out by those links and now we do see light mining at this base so he's back onto some kind of income but at what cost Look, queen now with this base coming back online in the top right should have the resources available to him to just barely close out the deal 
heal. He's now ahead in supply for the first time in a long time by about 20, but that could still change. I mean, as long as he's got enough of these counterattacks going on while distracting the Bioforce, we see enough forces to clean up here, but now we see Ling's running into the main base and causing absolute mayhem in there. So eventually, Queen will put a light into a checkmate scenario. It's just taking him so long to get there. Yeah, it's taking a long time. It's a hard-fought victory here for Queen, but putting down plagues and uh, closing the deal here against Light. One more Dark Swarm. No, he doesn't have the energy for it, and he's actually killing a lot of his own lings with the Irradiate, but it's fine. The main base looks like it's going to be cleared out here. Fire bats are popping, but they're just uh, getting wiped out by the lings that are pouring into the main base right now. All the production going down is probably going to be the final blow as Light just can't do anything against this force. He's actually losing the remainder of his vessels as well. Queen playing a fantastic game uh, against Light here and closing us out in style for this week of KCM. Just... I couldn't have asked for a better final game here, Shun. This is so fantastic. Yeah, I mean, he's only got... He, uh, Queen himself has only been hanging on by a few threads in this game, but he's been an absolute puppet master with those threads and has got, like, strung up, like, Pinocchio right now. And it, it, honestly, like... It, I don't, I don't think we could have hoped for for, for anything more from Queen in his performance in this game. Like, it's really exceptional how he's like able to keep the pressure on this long after being like in a bit of a flimsy state. Finally forcing out the GG. We're going to be seeing another Zerg victory. I'm all about it, saying. Let's see Zerg just skyrocket into the stratosphere this, this season. Wow, one of the best games we've got this season, honestly. Queen versus Light. A final to remember here, guys. That's going in the scrapbook. That's going in the 2024 best games video for sure. Crazy, crazy finisher. Yeah, so back and forth. So intense there. Um, hard to believe that that was, you know, start out, that started off with a CC first and almost a Terran victory there at the third base. Like, it was barely a hold from Queen, but it turned out to be such a great game. Whew, what a final game there, Shun. Absolute heart-pounding, high-octane gameplay for that final ZVT, but... In the end, Zerg managing to take the victory, finally putting some points on the board. Yeah, it's finally nice to see Zerg winning again. I'm really, I'm really excited because I, I want to see them do well this season. I don't want to see them just flatline and take a semifinals. I want to see them actually fight for it. And now we have that as a strong possibility here. And I want to see this line continue to trend upwards into the stratosphere and beyond saying, hopefully it'll be a, the Protoss flatlining now from my own bias. <laughs> <laughs> It's also really nice to see Queen perform, dude. He has not been yeah. uh, showing up much lately in a lot of these tournaments. And, uh, you know, the, the good old Zero that we know and love, who took down two ASL seasons and looks so dominating, he, he was, like, absent for quite some time. But in this game, he showed us that old performance. He showed us... The old zero, the one that we fell in love with, and I, I can't be, I couldn't be happier to see it. Absolutely, saying. I mean, I've, I've always really liked Zero for a very long time, and it, he has been very dominant in recent fashion for like a few years ago. But yeah, he just seemed to fall off a cliff in terms of his relevancy and ability to perform. But now we're starting to see some new life breathed into him, and hopefully, we'll see some more strong showings for him in the coming weeks. Yeah, keep our hopes high here, guys. This is it week number three thank you so much for watching we'll be back next week uh, for some more exciting kcm action see you there like and subscribe to the video go check out shun's channel as well make sure to hit the first link in the description to kcm's video his original video uh, here and his production value of this tournament is six so definitely go over there give him a comment a like and a subscribe and let him know that you care and that you're appreciating his content like we are here at the KCM. Thank you so much for being with me here today, Shun. Guys, see you next time. Thanks, guys.